I'm Cutie Rue SR. I also go by Rue. I am the host for Legally Cute. Uh, tonight we are having our lovely indie end of the year cute game celebration showcase. I have a lot of great runs tonight and especially like very, very adorable cute indie games. Uh, we have a cute little friend of ours, Macaroni here. Um, I was reminded by the beautiful community of Greece. Um, I'm definitely making sure I'm saying that correctly. Our first game is going to be ran by Aggie, and it's going to be the All Achievements for Greece, and the commentary is going to be done by Tasselfoot. And then we have a few other games tonight. We have another one of the Little Gator game, but the runner of Glint, and I'm going to be helping on commentary with that, as well as the Stonefly with Road Re Kill Revenge, and that commentary will be done by Osmorn. Very looking forward to the show tonight and for our first run it's going to be Greece like I mentioned and I have everyone here with me say hi Aggie and Tass hello hi hope everyone's having a good night I'm having and a good afternoon night. for you Aggie uh, oh yes, yes. <laughs> yes <I'm an> afternoon. <laughs> uh, I know it's evening but afternoon for Aggie yes um, and then I know it's evening for Tass as well. But whenever we are ready to get into the game, uh, you could do the countdown for us, Tass. You want to okay. Yeah, cool. Okay. So let's, let's start in three, two, one, go. So this is Greece. Uh, in case you're confused or you've never seen it before, uh, you might think it's Gris or Gris. Uh, depending upon what language you're using to pronounce it, but it is Greece. Uh, it is Spanish for gray. Uh, we have about two minutes and 40 seconds of cutscenes here, so we're going to go through some kind of just background and basic information. This game was released in 2018? 2018. I think. How? Oh, yeah, I'm already forgetting. Yep. Yeah, yeah, December of 2018. Uh, Late 2018 by Nomada Studios, published by Devolver. Uh, it is a very beautiful, um, watercolored, artistic, award-winning 2D platformer um, where we play this main character uh, who we call Greece, but I think technically has, has no name. Um, Basically, there, you're getting this opening cutscene. We're seeing this information uh, about a death. Uh, we'll find out more through the story, but we're grieving. And so we're going to go through the five emotions of grief. Um, those are denial, anger. Uh, wow, it's been so long since I've done this commentary. Um, bargaining. Bargaining. Uh, yeah, depression and acceptance. There we go. And those are represented by colors in this game. Uh, just like Greece is gray, those five colors uh, are going to be white, red, green, blue, and yellow. Uh, we do have some bonus colors at the very end of black and purple, but those are uh, going to be pretty quick uh, for it. And what are you watching here? You are seeing all achievements. Uh, this is being run on the Switch, and so the achievements are displayed in-game, because since Nintendo Switch has no platform achievements, um, but they are the same on PC as well. And so this is effectively the max percent category of the game. You're going to see the whole any percent, you're going to see the 100%, which is considered the all mementos run, where we collect 28 mementos and watch some extra lore cutscene. This is going to do all of that, plus it's going to do uh, a whole bunch of extra little tiny collectibles and little collect extra statues and things that are going to be seen throughout the run, uh, which technically adds about four minutes on top of all mementos, which adds about 11 minutes on top of the any percent, no major glitches. However, this is not no major glitches. <laughs> uh, Aggie will talk about that more once we actually get to it. Um, but right now, we're we're um, a sad girl here, uh, and but instead of going right, 
Aggie is going to immediately turn around and go left. I'm just going to go back to where we came from. You're, I, in fact, you're going to go back beyond uh, where you came from. Um, I watch out for those stairs. <clears throat> so this is this is an achievement um, because it's switch. It should display uh, every time that Aggie gets an achievement. It'll be really easy uh, to see. I, for, I, I, I yeah, see. There you go. Um, there's there's one of these type of statues that you have to interact with in each of the five main stages um, and then in the four larger stages which is all of the emotions except for denial so in red green blue and yellow there's going to be some extra collectibles uh, there's also two kind of skill-based achievements throughout the run um, but I don't think they're going to pose any problem for someone who as good at this game as Aggie is. So, fun fact about that first achievement. If you press any buttons while Grease is on the ground, you will not get the achievement. So you have to just let Grease get up by yourself. Yeah. I remember, I remember when we were all kind of playing with that. Sad times, indeed. Yeah. Uh, you'll notice that that Aggie is bopping around. Uh, you will see bunny hopping throughout this the entirety of this run. Uh, and the answer to the question why is is not just because it's fun, uh, but the obvious it's faster because this is still a speed run. And we we know this because uh, real early within the game's history, someone. Uh, you know, installed a mod and that displayed speed. And we noticed really, really quickly that when you walk on flat ground, your speed is like 3.5 or 3.2, forget which at this, uh, at this point. Uh, and it's 0.1 faster uh, when you're in the air on a single jump. Um, your speed walking on the ground changes depending upon whether you're walking up, walking down, or walking on straight ground. So you walk slower up slopes. So, uh, but being in the air, it's the same speed. It's 0.1 faster, which equates to roughly 3% faster for that flat ground. So it's even more beneficial, uh, like right now with Aggie being, uh, going up a hill. Um, also it's, it's not really noticeable, in, uh, in a lot of places, but, Aggie will be jumping into cutscenes um, because the basically Grease will slow walk from the moment that she gets into a cutscene. But if you're right outside that cutscene and jump, you'll m- retain your main speed um, until you land and then you'll go. So you can gain like half a second all the way up to uh, about two full seconds in one cutscene that is at the end of this section. Um, so throughout the run, it maybe saves, oh, you know, seven seconds or something if you can get good uh, jumping uh, into your cutscenes. So this game is an incredibly accessible speed game. So if, if you're a person who's watching, who's maybe played this game, really enjoyed this game, um, or just like speedruns, but has had a hard time getting into speedruns because you find them intimidating, then Grease is a really good game to get into. Um, it is a little bit long for, for a lot of people with speed runs. The, the any percent run is, is about, uh, maybe your first couple of runs might be an hour and 40 minutes, but pretty quickly, you know, an hour and 30 minutes, which certainly can be long, but, uh, it's a very straightforward run. There aren't a lot of different paths you can go. There aren't a lot of tricks. Um, the main category that people run is a no major glitches category. So it's it's pretty much you're playing mostly as intended. You're just doing lots of little optimizations like the jumping into the cutscenes, the bunny hopping. There's, uh, you know, cutting corners faster. Right there, uh, Aggie jumps into that hand. Uh, nice, nicely timed. There's like a, a visual cue on a fingernail that we use. To, to know when to do it, but if you clip the, the end, it, it costs you two seconds and it's very frustrating because um, this is a pretty consistent chapter relative to the others. You can notice that the, the visualizations of the game, the watercolors are constantly changing uh, and color just, just plays such a huge role in this game. And so, um, but I, 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 I have, I, I'll continue and constantly talk about um, 
you know, the, the world of this game and, and the brilliance of it throughout. But it, it's truly an accessible speed game. Uh, and I highly recommend that if, if, if you like what you're seeing and you like the this game, then please please join the Discord. Uh, you know, tons of people are there who are happy to help. We have tutorial videos, and and while it's it's not even the most actively run game, uh, the folks who are past runners are still active within the community to assist. So, um, yeah, uh, I mentioned at the beginning um, that we're going through the five emotions of grief. So that might be a strange term to people that you've heard it as the five stages of grief. And that's a bit of a misnomer. So I think um, a lot of people feel that calling it stages of grief doesn't do someone's grief or, or anyone's grief really justice um, or the appropriate weight behind it, because it's not stages. It's not a game of you know, Super Mario Brothers 1, where you're linearly going from World 1 to World 4 to World 8. Just just go with me on the analogy here, nonetheless. Um, it's I, you're I like bouncing it. back and forth between your emotions. You don't just go from denial to anger to bargaining. Like sometimes you'll hit bargaining and then you'll get angry again. Like Grief doesn't doesn't just follow this process that you go through. It's it's emotion. Uh, it's not logical. So the game the game shows this um, in a number of ways. In in the color palettes, you'll see as the game progresses, they overlap a lot. Uh, as we go through certain areas, we have to travel back through other areas to get to where we need to go or to return back to our hub. So there are all lots of really subtle ways that this game showcases uh, that nature of grief being a journey that we're going through and that there are emotions that we travel through and that it's not this straight line stages. Uh, again, so there you go. Again, another cutscene uh, Aggie's jumping into. And you know that we, we are playing an artistic indie game uh, because we're 10 minutes into the run and we're only now seeing um, the the name of the game appear on screen. So true. So true. <laughs> but in the best possible way. Yes. Indeed. Oh, and the music too. It's just so epic. Shout outs to Berlinist, uh, the Barcelona-based orchestra that did all of the music for this game. That's it's It's truly incredible as well. So, uh, you know, uh, we collected one of these mementos, uh, and that's the second one. There was one in that first chapter, uh, and then there are seven uh, in all of the chapters, except for one or two, and that gives us that gives us 28. There's 28 total. Yeah, three of the chapters have uh, seven. One of them has five, and then we have to go back to denial again later on to get a second one. Math. Yeah. Math is hard. It, it's late here for me. <laughs> it's, bear with me. Don't, um, don't worry, you you're good. You're you're really good. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're coming into the sandstorm section. So this is one of the two skill sections of the all achievements run. So in in the other categories, the the any percent runs or the all mementos run. We, we do a trick later on in this section, uh, towards the end of the section, that's called Sandstorm Skip. And it does exactly what you think. Uh, it's a pretty technical series of movements that you have to be very quick with. But if you're able to be fast enough and you're able to pull off some of these tricks, uh, you get to skip an entire Sandstorm cycle. And this saves uh, like 15 seconds, which is great. However, in order to do that, you have to get blown by the wind of this sandstorm. And one of the achievements of the game is don't get blown back by the wind within the sandstorm cycle. So unfortunately, we can't show off uh, the really cool tech behind what's known as the sandstorm shimmy or the Skylar shimmy uh, in honor of the person who came up with it. Shout outs to Skylar. Um, 
but all the other categories uh, show off the the shimmy in the skip. But this one, we we play it safe. Uh, no skips, just hiding in our little temple hidey holes to make sure that uh, that we don't get blown backwards. Which which is is very easy to do. The the cycles are quite lenient, uh, and you'll see that Aggie has a good bit of time to wait um, in between each one of these cycles. The the second of these two skill based um, achievements, and and I say skill based, but it's it's not like we're doing uh, an any percent hitless Elden Ring run here or something. You know, like it's not really that challenging of a, of a skill-based achievement. Um, but there is a second one and it is, it is a little bit harder than this one, but there, there are some visual cues that, that make it hopefully trivial. Um, so we haven't talked about kind of like the, how the game works, uh, but basically our goal is to collect these stars. You can see that that Aggie has uh, just collected one of them. That was what we what he they went into the uh, little cave there for. Um, and those stars build these light bridges. And so basically throughout the game, see the that light bridge right there that they walked over. Um, the, those are what we have to collect to be able to progress throughout the entire game. And then at the end of each chapter, uh, Aggie will bring them back to the central area and they will get deposited into the sky. Uh, and then, spoiler, at the end of the game, we'll have a lot of them and we'll be able to use them for a really large bridge. Everyone go, wee! Wee! Cool. That's that's our fun little slide there to get the quote unquote free memento uh, that I think all of us who have ever run all mementos have missed at least once in a run, yep. even though it's free. I've missed it on a PB pace run before. It was really <laughs> <Yeah>. sad. <laughs> oh, that is oh, and 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 then this game like if you're on a PB pace. Uh, yeah, you can reset it and everything like that, but it's just, it's kind of hard to be like, ugh, in that sense, especially yeah. the later. Yeah, so, uh, so you can see the memento right next to Aggie, but Aggie can't get it yet. Um, we, Reese doesn't jump high enough to get it, so we'll, we'll have to come back. Um, but we're going to get our first power up. And since this is the angry section of the game, we're we're gonna get a uh, an Angie, we're gonna get Aggie and Angie power up. <laughs> Say that five times fast. <laughs> I I will pass on that. <laughs> <laughs> I I I'll, and I'm the one. I'll pass on that too. <laughs> chat chat can do that for us. Yes. Yep. <laughs> chat chat is very smart. They can. They'll do it first try. Yeah. <laughs> Chat, all you GDQ cuties, you beautiful cuties of mine, say it five times fast. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I see how it is. Everybody's typing it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're going to have to see, to get this memento, we're going to use this power up. Boom. Uh, so they are angry power up right there. Um, that is our heavy, is, uh, is what we call it. And so it makes Grease a thick girl, uh, which has two properties. I was, oh my God, you had me so nervous there, Aggie. <laughs> I was like, oh God, uh, cause this still counts for that sandstorm section. Um, it, Aggie can't get blown back there and, uh, expertly done, but nerve-wracking to the commentator right there to get that um, heavy open. So the heavy does two things. One, it prevents, and this is this is the, the tutorial right here. Uh, this part right here uh, is to show off what the heavy can do. And so it, it prevents you from getting blown back in sandstorms, and it also can break through loose flo floorboards. Hey, and there we go, got the achievement. 
Well done. Nice. Hey. Hey. <laughs> um, so I, I would say that this is both like my favorite and least favorite memento in the game. I don't, I don't know uh, what, how you feel about it, Aggie. Yeah, it's both my favorite and least favorite. But <laughs> so I might be able to show I, we'll the see you in a second here. Yeah, so uh, Aggie stomped there twice. You have to stomp three times, and that takes you to the next area. Um, it, it doesn't really matter if you do it now or later, but um, basically there's very little RNG in the game, but that rock taxi right there, that's the biggest point of RNG in the entire run. Uh, and that was not the worst RNG, but not good RNG either. Uh, so that's the bad part about this memento is that you only you, you don't you don't have to deal with that RNG in other categories in, in any percent. Not bad, not bad. No shimmy, but enough to to get to get there. Almost. Yeah. Um, so you, you can actually do a shimmy in that section and you can get yourself blown back all the way to the door pretty much. Um, and it's super satisfying and super cool uh, to do, but it's also really tricky because we all practice the sandstorm shimmy on flat ground. So I think all of our timing and muscle memory is for doing it on flat ground, but that section you actually land above by, I, I don't know, well, so, well, I'll say 20 picks, so I don't know what it actually is, <laughs> you know, by like a, a three quarters of a centimeter. Shout outs to, to Aggie's metric system. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just, it messes with your, your timing because you land sooner than you think you will. Uh, so this is another achievement right here in, in other categories. Um, we would just continue to, to heavy the ground and just progress right out without doing any movement. But there's three statues here that are breakable and breaking those three statues will A, uh, send us to the next part because we will wind up slam, uh, heavying the ground three times. Uh, but two, we will break those three statues. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep. So that's so the same way at the start of the run where we wound up going left to the statue uh, and go, falling to our knees. Uh, that was the denial statue. This is the anger statues, and so um, you know there those there are one in each section. So and I said there's going to be some extra collectible type stuff. It's not actually collectibles, but um, we'll see them throughout this section. Uh, are there are there. 13, 14 of them, Aggie? I don't remember, remember. how many there are. There's oh, at good. least a dozen. There, there's more. There's at least 13. I don't remember if there's 13 or 14. Um, but we can count them out as, as it goes. Basically, there's, there's going to be a bunch of uh, swords, and we're just going to stomp the, and, and heavy the swords. Um, so some of the weird physics as well with this is that like, if you stand on one of these uh, pinwheels, you, the pinwheel will move slower. The weight of grease will cause the pinwheel to move slower. So you want to jump on the pinwheels just so that they'll move faster. It's a really nice and touch. Think, yeah. Push. Yeah, so here's the, it's like these, there's these swords that we go in, in, in heavy. That was There's one. Um, there's a lot of them. It's, this is like, isn't that big of a section? It's, it's, it's time consuming section because there's a lot to do, but it's not that big. And so we've already hit three of them. Make that four. It's always annoying to me hitting that one on the right causes the, you'd have to wait for the cycle. Yeah. And that like makes me makes me mad um this this entire area is cycle based and everything is on six second cycles so any any kind of mistake that costs you a cycle costs you six seconds and anything that makes is a mistake that doesn't cost you a cycle 
generally doesn't cost you any time at all. Or very minimal. Yep, which so is it's nice. both a blessing and a curse. <laughs> Depending on how badly you screw up. Yep. <laughs> I like this memento too, because like once you get it, you can just like drop down straight to that star that you need to collect anyway. You don't have to go out of your way back anywhere yeah. or you know double double your movement. There you go, made that cycle. <clears throat> was that six? I think that was six. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. The game will tell us if you did it right. Yep. If 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 not, if not, we'll have I'll to be go exploring. If not, I'll be Angie. No, 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 Aggie Angie. <laughs> Seven. Uh, so there. So let's talk about tech. Uh, didn't get it there. So one of the weird properties. So eight. Um, one of the weird properties of heavying is the hitbox of the heavy. So it's hard to fully explain it, but basically if you open up, if you open grease up into a heavy, when grease is standing nine, uh, exactly on like a seam or standing coyote time one frame off the edge of a ledge, and then you 10, uh, and then you go into that heavy, you will instantly go into the heavy. Um, as opposed to normally where it takes almost exactly half a second for the animation to play to go out um, into your heavy. So we call this, naturally, Insta-Heavy. Uh, and, you know, there, thank you. Wonderfully done, uh, Aggie, with the Insta-Heavy. Uh, you can see that there was no animation and that rock uh, exploded for our balloon immediately. So we gotta, we do have to run this back here. We collected the star, but there is also a memento here and we gotta get higher up. So we do, we do need to heavy and ride the balloon down. Um, but so yeah, so he uh, Insta heavying is, I would say it's swag more than anything else. Um, it is, it is frame perfect of a trick. It saves half a second every time you can do it. So, you know, it doesn't really save anything um, overall, but it looks super cool. So, you know, some sometimes you can just speed run for the swag. Yeah, um, I mean, we also haven't talked about momentum at all. We talked about mementos, but not momentum. Um, so you can see that when Aggie jumped off of or came off of that slope in that slide, um, they retained a ton of speed, like way more speed than normal. And oh, almost. Um, and that's that's because Aggie uh, 12. Uh, I don't know if that was 11 or 12. I've lost count now. It's it's a number above 10. Yeah. I, we've hit double. I don't have enough fingers anymore, so <laughs> I'm 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 screwed. Um, I don't think you've missed any though, from what I remember of this category. I am the record holder of this category, by the way, but I don't remember it. I think my run is from 2019, so I'm slightly rusty. Um, so the you 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 retain your speed and your momentum. Uh, if you jump from the end of a, of a slope. So pretty much any time that Grease is sliding down a slope, you want to jump from the end of it because you will retain your momentum and you'll save, you know, half a second, three quarter of a second, one second. Hopefully you're getting, you're all getting the theme of how you save time and, and how you go fast in this game. And it's by little tiny incremental improvements everywhere through a 90 minute long run. Uh, I, think I think that, that was, one's 12. Oh, that was 12? I, I think that one's 12. There's I, two more. Yeah, 
There, there are 14 total, and for whatever reason, the last two are both right here next to each other, and this should trigger it. 13, 14. Hey. Oh, nice. per perfectly done. Perfect. No, Never a doubt in, <laughs> in my mind. Yeah. I did have a quick question from Chab. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. All achievements run basically a hundred percent run. So uh, we we consider it a max percent run. We consider a hundred percent to be all mementos, um, basically because. Hold on, we'll we'll come we'll come back to this. I, I want Aggie to explain what they're doing. Okay. Cool. First, Let's try because this, again. this is something. This is something that we haven't seen yet in this run, and it's something that's very big. Ooh, yeah. okay. That's cool. So basically what's happening here is we're lagging the game in such a way that you basically get more momentum. And so usually you'd have to go all the way to the top of this, win this Ferris wheel and heavy from the top. But by doing that, we basically skip going all the way to the top to the top is really fun really? yeah really? and yeah and at the moment it is basically switch exclusive you can do it on pc if you have a really if you somehow make the game lag super super hard there is an external program you can use but you can't use it in rounds Okay. Yeah. So, so for those reasons, it's effectively a switch only tech. Um, and, and Aggie is really the only one who has been heavily experimenting with it, uh, and incorporating it into runs. So, um, effectively what it is, is on the any percent side is we have two categories for any percent. We have a any percent, um, which traditionally is run on version 1.0 of the game, which makes it PC only. Um, and it has an out of bounds skip that we haven't hit in, in the game. I'll call it out uh, when we get to it, but it basically, it skips the whole underwater section in the depression uh, portion of the game. Um, and it saves roughly two and a half minutes. Um, and that's the pretty much the the sole large difference. There's two very small differences as well, but that's really the main difference between our any percent category and our any percent no major glitches category. Until the past couple of months, when this switch glitch uh, or this this lag glitch, we should say, um, was found, which now opens up a second major glitch because uh, this this was ruled a major glitch. Uh, for since it, it can be abused in a lot of ways, more of which we will see. Uh, so stay tuned. Don't don't go anywhere, chat. Um, but it's it certainly raised questions about how much time it can save, uh, where all it can be used, um, can it be done on PC? So. Uh, if anyone is is curious about that, you know, would love to have more glitch hunting folks playing around with these things. Um, but there hasn't been much discussion about its use case in the other categories, which are not split because and they're not split because the out of bounds glitch can't be used in those other categories because you would skip collectibles, mementos. Um, or other achievements as well that are required from that section. So there's never been a reason or a need to discuss uh, splitting the categories for them. Um, also, you know, not as many people run them, so there isn't as much uh, competition, so there hasn't ever really been a need. But uh, what that means is, is that there is no uh no major glitch restriction on the other categories which makes these tricks uh legal for them <laughs> but it'll be showcased in this category oh no it, i mean they, it, it they, these tricks are legal oh, okay oh okay okay yeah 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 um so we are now in the the forest of bargaining uh and to get there 
you, you probably can't tell, but we took this big bridge and that bridge is actually over the top of the denial area. Um, the map for this game is just one huge map, uh, which is why there is kind of a lot of just movement. Um, but there's also, there's no loading zones really anywhere in this game. Um, you're just, you're just going from A to B to C. Sometimes you move back, uh, in different ways. Oh, hello. Uh, that's, that's, uh, macaroni. You, you saw a brief encounter with them, uh, at the start of the show on, on Rue's microphone stand. Uh -huh. We'll interact with, with macaroni a little bit more throughout no. this first half of bargaining. Mac um, is the best, by the way. <laughs> but to go to go back and just to answer it, um, we consider all mementos 100% because everything that you do inside and are rewarded inside the game is done in that category. So basically within the game itself, um, there's, there's a spot where you can see your progress, or multiple places really, for seeing your progress on how many mementos you've collected. And then if you collect all of the mementos, there's a little secret area where you can get an extra cutscene. Um, there's no in-game rewards for all of the other stuff that Aggie is doing. Uh, ex and the only rewards for them are the external meta achievements um, from the platform. On, on Switch, you do get the notification in-game, but that's really just because of the fact that Switch doesn't have its own platform achievements. Um, so because of that, we consider this category uh, max percent as opposed to 100% because you're doing more than what we consider the 100% to be. I don't know why, but and the we're trees to are so again. cute. Yay! And the trees are so cute, by the way. I, I've never seen square trees in my life, but I'm all for it. And Macaroni likes apples. And those of you may be wondering, why is the forest friend uh, named Macaroni? And you would be right to ask that. Uh, this game has no text, so there's no way of knowing the names of any of the characters or creatures that we meet. But we are speedrunners, and we see these these creatures uh, and, and all the things within the game many, many times, and so we come up with names ourselves. <clears throat> uh, I myself came up with the name Macaroni uh, very early in this game's uh, tenure in existence, and why did I come up with the name Macaroni? Well, you can see that our little friend has uh, three feathers in their head, uh, and that reminded me of the song Yankee Doodle Dandy, with uh, stuck a feather in their cap uh, and called it macaroni. And so this little dude's got three feathers in their head and I thought that was pretty macaroni. Aww. And so when we later, when people later looked through the source code for the game, we found that the forest friend is called Kodamo in source code. Yeah which is uh, like a Japanese um, like spirit creature or something, uh, I think. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was wondering about that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there you go. So this, this is again, this is um, the extra collectibles. We're gonna, we're gonna make sure that Macaroni is not hungry. What? Um, so there are four optional additional apples. You you have to jump one more time up there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Stop getting stuck. Um, yeah, so there are four uh, additional kind of slightly hidden apples um, beyond the mandatory progression apples. Um, and so uh, there will be an achievement for feeding all four of those to Macaroni. Uh, macaroni is another source of RNG uh, that, that we discovered. Um, I, I, in all of my doing ILs of the game, I was getting really confused when I was having what I thought were 
perfect or near perfect sections on execution. And yet I was losing exactly one second or exactly two seconds to what my gold times were. And I was like, why is this happening? And I went and, and compared footage uh, and saw that macaroni sometimes delays eating apples by one second. Mm -hmm. And so again, someone looked in the game code and there is hard programmed RNG in terms of whether macaroni will instantly eat the apples or will wait on eating the apple for a second. So macaroni RNG, there's that's another one of the, the bonus apples. Oh, that's interesting. Macaroni RNG is a thing. Um, there is also star RNG. Uh, the stars that get deposited into the sky at the end of each section, they move randomly up into the sky. So you can get up to about half a second, maybe a little bit more than half a second of RNG depending upon your sky, your star sky movement patterns. Uh, that is, is very difficult to tell one way or the other, whether you're getting good or bad <laughs> star RNG. That um, is fascinating to find out though, because yeah, I, I would have never noticed on the star one. Yeah, we, we only noticed, again, because of doing ILs. Um, the doing denial ILs, the, the, that section is, is sh short enough and consistent enough that, you know, we, we were all performing it incredibly consistently and we were getting times that were varying by a third to a half of a second and couldn't figure out why. And again, you know, looking into the game code, discovered that there's, there's hard programmed RNG for, for how they go up into the sky. So, um, can't say that I'm a fan of that, uh, Namada, but, you know, that, that's a design choice. Because I don't think any casual player of the game would ever, ever know or realize it. So, uh, I, I, I have a hard time understanding what that adds to the experience, but, uh, you know. It adds something. It's... It it's it does it certainly adds something to the speed run. <laughs> it does. I just I think that's actually fun to find out as well because that's something that like you know what I mean? Like if you there's a difference between speedrunning a game like over and over again as well as like just speedrunning with like um the IRLs. It's just different, I think. Like the individual levels I meant to say. Um for me, that's I. I just think they're two different. Like you get to find out more when you do like things over and over in short bursts versus like longer periods of time. But sometimes you might notice in something in longer periods of time too. It's just a different way to speed run and find out, you know, new tech or different things like this. Yeah, and I think for the most part, like we, it's not like we had uh, like some games. They have people that pretty much only focus on doing ILs, and I don't. That's that hasn't really ever been the case with this game. People, for the most part, would go and do ILs as practice um, to to focus on one section of the game over and over and over again to mm -hmm. help with that muscle memory, um, as opposed to having to go through a ninety minute run to get a practice on it once. You could spend fifteen minutes, uh, and you could spend ninety minutes on one section and do the do it six times in a row. Yeah. So. Um, but just as a result, you know, and, and a lot of us are still competitive. So if you get multiple people even doing it and someone beats your, your IL, then, well, now you, you just, you want to get it back anyway. So, um, these are red trees, red trees behave differently than green trees. Green trees are just on cycles, uh, and red trees, they alternate based on Greece's jumping. So this is one of those few sections of the game where bunny hopping is ill-advised. Ah, uh, didn't, didn't get the swag jump, though. I really like the swag jump. You know, what's the point of speedrunning if you aren't doing a little bit of swag? <laughs> exactly. Uh, we like swag. Um, I was going to say, though, 
it, I think it's fascinating that it's nice to have like hear all these facts that are going on, especially with the runner and the commentator, because you know they they've done a lot of work on this game, and it's great to hear all this because, in my opinion, like I didn't know a lot of it. I didn't know that Star RNG. I didn't know about Macaroni RNG. Like it's just <laughs> interesting. So the thing is, is that like unless you're competing for you know not necessarily world record times but pretty close like if you're unless you're competing at the highest levels of of this game those facts aren't really pertinent so it doesn't come into play um but at the at the highest levels where one second is making the difference especially on the ILs um, because this game is just so consistent uh, across most of it, um, having one to two seconds worth of RNG can actually make a huge difference, even though it's a, a 14 or 15 minute long IL, the rest of the IL is so consistent. Or has, has the potential to be so consistent that, 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 that it does come into play. And so you wind up figuring things out uh, as a result. So we have a second power up now. Um, we have a double jump, um, which is mostly a glide. So as when we were talking about earlier, the speeds uh, where Greece is 0.1 faster when jumping, that only applies to the first jump. The second jump is the same speed as walking on flat ground. So even though we have the double jump, in most cases, we're going to try to single jump. This does negate a little bit of Aggie's ability to buffer those jumps, because uh, buffering, oh, that was weird timing. Uh, buffering those jumps would result in, do in doing the double jump, uh, which we don't, we don't want. Um, the exception to that is on stairs uh, and 45 degree inclines, where it's been timed to be roughly equal um, between single jumping and double jumping, uh, mostly because of the imprecise nature of the single jumps, since you can't buffer the inputs you wind up losing a little bit of time before you can get your other input in um, that kind of balances out the double jump time loss. Lots of birds. Don't, don't forget. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so that's, that's our statue. Um, trying to sing. So if it, uh, the other aspect is, is so, you know, there's no text, uh, Greece doesn't speak, um, but there is a button where Greece can try to speak and just kind of nothing happens. It's kind of like a ah, type of a sound. Um, I'm not going to make that sound again. Um, <laughs> but basically, Aggie hit that button at that statue, and that's uh, an achievement. Yeah, if you don't like seeing Greece cry. Um, but then it, we're, we're bringing the giant bird into things, so... Super, super scary bird. Not really. There, there is a period where, where Burb is friend. But that is not it's right just now. Short, it is just short-lived, and it is not yet. Uh, so the bird basically acts similarly to the sandstorm, where its its angry yells will push us backwards, and if we let it go long enough, um, it will roll us up again. So, kind of like that. Um, but we still have our heavy, and Aggie has very good movement. Uh, so there will be places where we need to use the heavy, but also places where Aggie should be able to get by without having to do the heavy at all. 
Also, while this is this game is not Shipo, Shipo is still a very good game. Uh, by my my wonderful friend Kyle Thompson. Wait, really? Wait, 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 wait. What? Sorry, hold on. I yep. you know I run Shipo, right? <laughs> and I have like the second in the all bosses category. The other categories I have better times in, but I never submit it. But the <laughs> I don't remember where I am on the leaderboard. And Glint is part of the Shibo community too. Glint, who's gonna be the next runner for a uh, little Gator game? So sorry, I didn't realize. <laughs> That's so well, cool. Yeah, our company published Islets. Really? Yep. Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. Okay. Okay, that's really cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to come back on this later. Not Maybe not on the GDQ stage <laughs> right now, but yeah, this Let's is Let's focus facts. on Greece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Greece is good. Sorry. Small world moment. Boom. <laughs> that's really cool. Uh, there's a, there's a cool trick that's that's going to be coming up uh, on the next screen though. That it is a lot easier now than it used to be. Um, we we had someone speedrun this game blindfolded, uh, named uh, Crystal Saver, who actually did this category blindfolded, uh, which is crazy. Um, and and definitely worth watching uh that's a, it's a really cool video um and it's it is submitted to the leaderboards so you should check that out uh oh, blindfolded grease but in cool. the process of doing their blindfold um setups and testing they actually discovered a easier way of doing bird blow which is what aggie did um so we don't really know why it works but you can basically jump into the bird, which causes it to yell at you twice in a row, which gives you enough momentum to get to the center area. And then when you reach the center area, it just immediately yells and blows at you again. So it saves three seconds. Um, but it used to be significantly harder to, you had to do all of this specific setup and jump movement um, in order to trigger it correctly while also having enough height and speed to make that central platform. But now uh, you basically just like face up into the bird and are just like, Hello! and the bird just pushes you and it works, uh, which is really cool. So this is this is the bo first boss fight of the game. It's about to be over. Aw, oh, didn't, didn't get uh, the, the clean second part of the boss fight, but that's okay. Four sets of birds up to the sky. So, you know, we're, we're schmoving along. We're uh, basically at the halfway point of things, maybe a little bit past the halfway point through two of the, the, the four big sections. My brain is still mind blowing. Hold on. I'm still, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like nerding out over here. Uh, yes. So basically all these indie games that I have been seeing like uh, Songbird Symphony, uh, Grease, uh, Cheapo, um, I have sped run them. I really love them. I even mentioned, uh, not HOA, but it's HOA. Uh, I even sped run that one too. I, I love I've played, games. I've played all of these games. They're all good games. <laughs> They're so good. I, pl I play a lot of indie games. I love indie games. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like nerdy now. Okay. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, okay. I see that we have a request. I'm going to do this request while I hear this beautiful song. I love this song. Um, so we've officially sequenced from the bargaining section to the depression section. Uh, again, you can see that the color palette uh, still has some greenish hues to it, but a lot of blues. Um, also, something you might not have noticed is that we finish each section in a hand. 
Uh, oh, so close. So close. So there's a blind fall there, um, but there is a fast glide out of that. Um, however, because it's blind, you don't know when you need to jump out of it. Um, and if you're early, like Aggie just was, you basically jump into the side of that building. Um, and if you're late, you fall into the water, uh, both of which lose one and a half seconds. Um, so we're actually traversing the same part of the level, uh, the previous level that we started out on. But now because it's raining, there are a bunch of these blue platforms that weren't previously visible uh, or usable. Like you, you, even if you knew that they were there, you couldn't stand on them um, beforehand until now. But so now we're doing it again. But again, this goes back to the themes of emotions of grief and traveling uh, in a non-linear path because we're traveling back through bargaining uh, even though that we are now in depression. Memento get. Yes. Uh, and and now, that, now that because there is water, swimming is very, very slow. Yeah. Uh, so any anytime that Aggie is falls into the water, they're... A, going to stay as, as, as far as long as they can out of it, and B, uh, in most cases, as soon as they get into the water, uh, they're going to jump out of it. There, There is, like, one little setup spot where basically, like, if you jump right away in and out, then it doesn't align properly, so it's faster to move a little bit forward in the water uh, before then jumping out, so that when you jump out, you get onto land uh, versus having to do an extra jump. Um, but that's that's the exception. Most of the time, as soon as you hit the water, you want to immediately jump out of it. You also want to, in most cases, be in your glide when you go into the water. Because uh, if you fall from, basically you retain <clears throat> your momentum going into the water. So if you fall from high up, you'll fall further into the water and have to slowly climb your way back to the surface before you can then jump out. Uh, whereas if you're gliding, you, it, it tapers out your momentum, and when you hit the water, you'll almost instantly be able to jump out again. I'm going to use that um, bag to skip a, little bit, a bit later. Yeah, I was actually just going to say that. Yeah, there you go. There's an example of what you don't want to do. <laughs> Thank you for showing that off, that example off completely intentionally, I'm sure. Yeah, Maggie. of course. Absolutely intentionally. <laughs> and we have to show everyone all the things. Yep. So, uh, again, another thing that you probably wouldn't realize if you were playing this game casually um, or you probably also wouldn't realize it even if you were just uh, a relatively new speedrunner, is that from here until you we get our... Oh, so this is the what Aggie was just referencing. Um, that's called Heavy Dive Skip, um, which for, if you do it first try, it saves five seconds. With Aggie doing it second try, it saves maybe like two seconds. Um, but basically, if you... It, and this is true in a lot of places. If you do that heavy right on the edge of a seam, you'll stay on the top part and you won't fall through. Um, so basically, if you heavied in the middle, you would retain your heavy until you hit the water. You would fall really far down and you would have to slowly climb back up. But because you're heavying... Very nice. Uh, use of the, the lag trick, uh, saving having to go up to the top. And, and heavy your way down uh, through that water. Um, but so the, the trick basically, it gets you out of your, your heavy state so that when you're falling down, you can uh, glide your way out straight to the platform in hand. The most beautiful screen in the game, in my opinion, right here. Uh, so enjoy everybody. Lovely. 
Uh, so what I was saying before all that though is that this entire section until we get our next power up is all on one giant eight second uh, set of cycles. Um, everything that we do, which in this whole section is like four and a half to five minutes, depending upon the category, uh, all of it comes down to time loss uh, gained or lost in eight minute or eight eight second increments. So make make two seconds of mistakes but lose eight seconds as a result, potentially. Um, so, and and it effectively, it, in a lot of ways, it negates um, good movement in a lot of ways. So I, I don't know exactly for all mementos and all achievements, um, the, the specific timings on things, but on the any percent side, there is a fast cycle which for top runners is not too difficult to make. Um, I would say like you usually still have maybe four or five seconds of leeway and you can still make fast cycle. But there is also, so in that regard, you can make mistakes and you're still not gonna lose time, but you can also like play it perfectly and you're not gonna gain any time, except there is a fastest cycle, <clears throat> which can save you an entire cycle if you effectively play for five minutes completely flawlessly. Um, and I forget, Aggie, have you ever made fastest cycle oh, in a no. full game run? Absolutely right. not. So, so Aggie is uh, third place on the leaderboards, uh, and just just basically put it in terms of how difficult it is by no, absolutely not. Like. That was a ridiculous thing of me asking. And so that's like right there, that cost eight seconds and Aggie only missed it by like half a second. So that's that's super frustrating um, the way this whole section is out. But so that puts it in perspective. Uh, I have the second place any percent time. I have made fastest cycle once ever. I think once it might have been twice, but I think it's been once. So that's how hard it is. Uh, the world record holder, Skylar, has made it a few times, but it's it's still like it's incredibly hard, incredibly, incredibly hard for the best players uh, of this game to do. This is uh, also this is the area it, it would be after you we get the power up, but this is the area where we would do the skip in the any percent out of bounds category, uh, just to give that reference. Um, Greece is a very forgiving game. Like there's coyote time. There's a lot of platforms that you can still stand on even after visually they've disappeared. Um, we use that in a lot of places, including right there on that right side uh, to basically save a cycle. So. If you're playing this game casually or even as like a new runner and you're waiting to see the heavy and the, the flash of the freeze before you release the button press of your heavy to come out of it, there's a spot there and a cycle that you just, you won't make the next one in time. You'll have to wait an entire cycle. Um, but what you can do and what you'll you can learn is, from from runners like myself or Aggie or other folks in the Discord uh, to you know <laughs> do a little shout out and, and promotion once again for the Discord is um, you just you 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 can time it correctly and release your heavy early and and it'll still trigger and it'll still give you the heavy and it'll still give you the platform but you can start moving a little bit earlier and you'll be able to make. Uh, oh, the one cycle stuff. And and again, that's the sort of thing that gets used in a number of different places throughout this run where we abuse the forgiveness and leniency of the game to skip cycles and to save uh, the frames. So this is the underwater section. Uh, it's super fun. Um, now that we have our swim power up, underwater movement is now the fastest mode of travel in the game uh, as opposed to previously it was the slowest um 
Keyboard players don't necessarily agree that underwater section is the most fun uh, in the game, but I think anyone who uses analog stick for this section of the game probably agrees that water movement um, is a lot of fun, um, especially there's a couple of spots where we get to do some, some kind of technical water movement. Um, I have not seen that one before. I was wondering what you were doing, Aggie. Uh, that was not the place that you normally go to get up to that section. So once again, abusing the lag uh, to save a little bit of time. Yep, yeah, you'll notice that a little hole just above where you're meant to go around. Now they're just skipping that entirely. Yeah, you kind of have to like snake through it as well. So that's that's what makes it um, slower. So it's the sort of thing that since we said that moving through water is the fastest way of traveling, um, kind of anytime we're exiting water, we want to use our like our water dash um, to exit out of the water because we retain the momentum. <laughs> And that's, that's what makes this section so much fun um, and satisfying to do, I, I think, is, yeah. is all of the fun ways that you can move in and out of the water. Yeah. The water, like, swimming mechanic is actually pretty, it's, like, it's really nice. Uh, and so this, this section here, the, the water tower, um, is the one that we do the least intended way. I think the other the other sections, well, yeah. So <laughs> we nice. Um, that is not how you're supposed to do that. You're you're supposed to go left and constantly jump in and out and and go back and forth between the towers. But uh, nobody's got time for that. Oh, nice nice cutscene skip on the the turtle. <laughs> It's not technically uh, a turtle's cutscene skip, but basically what it is is you're supposed to stop in the center of the turtle and then the cutscene plays. But the thing is, is that the turtle only swims south when you're near it. So the turtle will just stop until you go and get close to it. So by triggering that, there's that, there's our fourth statue um, for our achievement. Uh, nice. So by basically triggering the start of the cutscene and then Fit kind of precisely timing uh, everything, you can, at the last second, dive out of it and go south so that basically um, the turtle never stops. So you save uh, about three seconds um, by doing the, the cutscene skip there, which it's it's not actually a cutscene skip, but that's the, the name that we've come up with. If anyone has a better name for what's actually being done there, that is not like 7,000 words to explain it, um, I'm, I'm sure we would be open to changing it to something that actually describes it better. So technically this is the end of blue. I, in my head, this is not the end of blue because there's a lot of water type stuff left. Um, to me, there's still, there's still at least one more section, if not two. Um, but this is the part where we go into the hand, uh, and we, you know, look at the statue, and that's where, um, all of the chapters officially end. Um, and so if you've been paying attention, you'll actually notice that the statue attached to the hand gets more and more complete as we progress through the game. So at the end of Denial, it was literally just a hand. Um, and then as we went on, like, so at the end of Bargaining, the head was starting to come back, but the entire, like, hair and brain portion was still missing. Um, it's, you know, and so the symbolism there is uh, that as we're moving through and we're progressing, we're starting to heal. And as we're healing, the statue is becoming whole again, because uh, while you probably weren't paying attention, at the opening cutscene of the game, 
was the statue breaking apart. Um, but even as we put the statue together, the statue still kind of falls apart as we're building it back. And so then we have to build it again. Uh, enter the second boss fight of the game, which is also the bird, but not the bird. Uh, <laughs> this is also our second skill achievement that we need to do. Say hello to the water snake, AKA the eel. Also uh, so the achievement here is to not get bitten by the eel. So the eel will bite six times, uh, four in this first part and twice in the second part. Um, but the eel telegraphs the bite. So before the eel bites, they will chomp uh, a little bit. There'll be like a, a very mini chomp. It'll oh, open no. up again. I didn't. Wait. I got. I got bit. Oh. I got bit by the that's, by the mini snake. By the yep. mini snake. So that's the worst so, spot to get bit. Yeah. So that's that's unfortunate. Um, but because that's an achievement, we have to restart the section. Um, which what makes it frustrating is not just having to replay it. But there's also like 40 seconds of cutscene here. Um, or more than 40 seconds of cutscene that has to play again. Uh, so that's that's very unfortunate. But, um, you know, maybe maybe you need to pay attention again for this. But Aggie, um, the the eel telegraphs when it's about to bite uh, by closing its mouth a little bit and then opening mm, it. Again. Yeah, I don't know if you knew that. No, I guess I didn't know that. Hey, at least you got the right. information now. Yeah, so you're good. You're good. No no worries here. But, yeah. But that, now it's, that, was, now just, it's that was just practice. Yeah, that was that was a practice round. We yeah. got this. Okay, so I have a question, um, just out of my own curiosity, while we're kind of getting back into the the fight again. Um, what got you both into uh, Greece. Um, I'm going to go with Tass first, just because Aggie's going to have a fight. <laughs> uh, so what got me into this game actually was GDQ, um, which you might be saying, uh, how is that possible? The game has never been uh, showcased on a main GDQ and has only recently been in any hotfixes, which uh, Rue, you were actually the first person to play this game on a hotfix, so that's a, a claim to fame. Um, and and then and now it's it's I think this is the fourth fourth time third or fourth time uh, it's been on hotfix this year, which is fantastic. Uh, more the merrier. Anyway, um, I'm going off on a tangent. Uh, after the game came out, there was. AGDQ 2019 was like a couple of weeks after the game released from December 2018. And uh, it was a game that was being promoted. Um, the, the publisher Devolver Digital is a, a big sponsor of GDQ, uh, has been for a long time. And they had paid sponsorship for Greece on all throughout the week on GDQ. Um, in that, you know, lower left-hand corner ad spot. And so when I was watching GDQ, and I, I was speeding, speed running other stuff like Donut County and Limbo um, previously, and I saw that, and I saw the game, and, and I was like, I don't know what this game is, and I'm going to go on Steam and look at what this game is, and I saw it, and I'm like, oh, this looks really beautiful. Uh, I think it would be a good game to play with my partner at the time. Uh, that I thought that she would like it and that we would have fun to play it together. Uh, it turns out she was bored by the game, but I found a lot of beauty in it and thought that it would be a game that I would really enjoy to speedrun um, because uh, I don't like games that have too much tech to them. Um, I like finding all of these like little micro optimizations that I've talked about in this run. That is the stuff that is interesting and fun for me in, in a speed run. Um, so 
after playing this game, I thought that it would be a good game to speedrun and, and played it a few more times and joined the Discord and learned some strats at the time and found some strats of my own. Oh. And <laughs> that one's too. Uh, <laughs> that's that starts you at the second half, I think. Yeah, it is the second half, thankfully. Yeah, yeah. that is good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, imagine having to do that all over again. Yeah. Um, it does it save because of the memento that you got? Yes. Ah, interesting. Uh, it would have saved me in the second half as well, if just further back. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it would have been at the start of the section. Oh, okay, okay. Where, yeah, it's like you're roaming around in the darkness. Yeah. This part always yeah. scares me. I don't know why. It just does. The big, the big shoe. Yeah. Always gets to me every single time. And I know it's there, but it gets to me. I might not be uh, as... Uh, <laughs> oh. You're waiting too long, Aggie. Yeah. Well... well. Might as well, you need to might as well keep going. You need to yeah. No, you're not gonna reset. Nah. Yeah. One more time. <laughs> yeah, you're wait. You're waiting too long for your your input. Yeah. Your, your press. You did the same thing on the the first time. Um, also. the the, fir the first time the dash was on cooldown. The swim was on cooldown. Because I went too early. Oh. I know uh, what I did the first from... time. Oh. Yeah. I, I have forgotten the timings of all this. No, it's okay. I honestly kind of want to see the achievement too, because I know this is not an easy achievement. This is this is definitely the hardest of the achievements in the game. Um, I think this this game is is really impressive. I think for the percentage of players what? who have completed the game. Um Yeah, I'm I'm going to pull up the data like Okay. So, 41% of people have finished the game, uh which is pretty high. It actually used to be higher. That percentage has fallen over time. I remember the last it's been a long time since I've looked, but I feel like the last time I looked it was like 60% had finished. So, it's not oh. quite as as uh as tough, but yeah. 8% of people have the, the eel. Ew. Am I one of them? Hold turtle. on. Turtle. Yay, turtle. Saved by the turtle. I liked what the mentions of the turtle names earlier. I like Turtle Scout or Scoot. I think it was Scoot. Yeah, I like Turtle Scoot. And then Tortoise and Hare, Hare Turtle Power, Fast Turtle. <laughs> like, I remember the, the whole skip name, and the, I liked all those names. I just wanted to mention that. There you go. There's, there's the achievement has been gotten. Yeah, uh, all, achievement unlocked. All I, all I know is that turtle saves the day. Yeah. Turtle uh, is which based. Is, it's very confusing in the any percent run because you actually skip everything with the turtle in the any percent run. So the turtle just kind of comes out of nowhere in the in the you know the plot and the lore of that category. Um, just to give you an update, I did get the avoid eel bites on March 23rd at 11.32 p.m. <laughs> so I nice. am in that percentage. Yes. Muscle tough. Yes. But I'm wondering um, if that was during the hotfix show. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, so this is considered the return back to the hub um, afterwards. So the, the fight is over and with that, the same way that when we were turning back to the hub after the green section, it had turned mostly blue already. Uh, we can now see that there are lots and lots of yellows here. Man, it's it's almost like the developers knew what they were doing and were planning all of this out. Almost. almost. Probably coincidence, though. So we're going to grab a memento uh, real quick here. I love seeing all the mementos, to be honest with you. So and then and then we're going to we're going to do the YOLO jump. Oh, it's this jump. I love this jump. 
Uh, no. Well, no YOLO jump. Um, but so basically, uh, I, I one time was just doing a run and I accidentally dived out of that area uh, a little bit too far to the left and kind of like just nearly terrified myself horribly uh but somehow landed completely on the other platform and was like oh that's a thing you can do that's terrifying i'm why would i why would i want to do this so um and then i timed it out and it basically saves one second to to dive straight to that left platform versus going to the the intended platform um but if you don't do it right while still going for it you fall back down below into the water and then you have to circle your way back up to the top again which loses about 15 seconds so that's yeah, why we call that. it the yolo jump because it's it's a one second time save versus a 15 second time loss but so, uh, yolo, <laughs> yolo yep it's swag so therefore you must go for it always go for the swag uh, so we mentioned before that there was a second memento in back in denial. Uh, you know, we couldn't get it before, but now we can because we are a swimmy girl and it was underwater. So that whole section underwater, that is denial. Um, like the, that big staircase there was the staircase that Aggie climbed, um, at the end of the denial section. So even though we are heading to acceptance, we still had a very brief... I'm upset about that. Uh, a very brief little jolt into denial. Um, I'm upset about that because Aggie just broke that pot. Um, and it's not that I'm upset that Aggie broke the pot. It's that I'm upset that Aggie broke the pot now versus having broken that pot about 40 minutes ago. Um, there, There is a, a large contention between those who break the pot after the green section versus those who break the pot at the start of the yellow section. Uh, it makes no difference time-wise. It is just all preference, but I think all the all the cool kids do it at the end of green. I, no, I, all the, I, no, all the cool kids definitely do it before yellow. <laughs> I, would say, I would say Aggie disagrees with me, but <laughs> so be it. I'm a, I'm a cool kid, maybe? Question marks? I don't know when I do it. I don't remember. Uh, I would, I'm, uh, I'm with Taz. Sorry, Aggie. Then I'm going to uh, become with Aggie. That's a shame. <laughs> I'll, nice. I'll be with Aggie after. Oh. <laughs> uh, Going out there it's saves so absolutely no time, by the way. Yeah, because that's it's the same cycle. Yep. But it was swag. Exactly. That was swag. Yeah. It's all for the swag. <laughs> Sorry, I I saw something um that was pretty funny just right now. Um but yeah. <laughs> Up a chat. Chat yeah, talking chat. about denial is a river. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh. It's time for bed. Is it? <laughs> is, it is it time? It's time. It's time for bed. I think. I think it's time for bed. It's almost midnight. All right. <laughs> You're doing a fantastic job commentating, <laughs> and Aggie's doing a fantastic job of running. Because this game is quite something, especially when you have to get all the achievements, all the mementos, and. You know, it, it, it's it, so this run is completely different, in my opinion, from the any percent because you get more of the game. And that's actually pretty cool. So, I mean, you're covering like all of the same area. You are seeing a little bit extra from all of the kind of little hidden nooks and crannies where the mementos um, are, are buried. Uh, this section is really cool because of all all the momentum jumps out of the water. Um, it's very stylish to go through. Um, but to me, the, the biggest highlight of the, of, of especially this all mementos run, um, is, is seeing the bonus cutscene. Um, so the, the, the extra one minute cutscene that we're going to get 
not at, at the end of the run, but very close to the end of the run. Um, it does it does help a lot with some of the lore uh, and fills in some of the gaps in the story that you're otherwise not getting. So, and in a, in a game that is completely told um, visually, having an extra minute of cutscene is 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 to me very useful um, because there there aren't actually that many cutscenes in the game either. There's there's the one in the beginning of the game. Um, there's some very short ones, uh, like in the middle of, of section of red. There's a short cutscene, uh, and then towards the end of the game, there's uh, two cutscenes. But that's pretty much it, I think. So yeah, that's about it. So you aren't getting a lot of this story outside of the the game that you're playing through itself, and so because of that, a lot of the story is being told through the hand statues, it's being told through the colors, it's being told through your movements and your power-ups that you're receiving. So I'm also a, a, a staunch right side first uh, acceptance speedrunner, but I don't know. I just assume that it's because Aggie is Australian and therefore everything is upside down. Yep, exactly. So <laughs> technically I'm also going right first. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that broke me. <laughs> uh, I, I have no comment other than laughs. <laughs> This, this is not our first marathon together. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm just returning back to my to my homeland by going upside down. <laughs> well, you're right side up now. Exactly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Birds, okay. please. There you go. I have to say, I think this is my favorite area only because of like the music's so good and like you get to interact with like the animals and I don't know, like you have the butterflies and then you have like the weird crab thing and then uh, so, all yeah. that fun stuff. The, so the platforming is, you know, it gets more and more complex throughout the game. Um, like it's still not particularly challenging compared to most other games of platforming, but it, it does have a progression of difficulty as you go through it. Nice dolphining. Um, so from that sense, this section is rewarding um, for your skill and your ability to execute. Um, nice. I, I have no idea where you're actually going to be using that trick. So every time you do it is like, I'm like a small child over here. Aww. I'm like, Ooh, fun trick, fun trick. <laughs> That's cute. Uh, this this is so the, that blue water section, I think overall is my favorite section. But right there, that little sequence is my favorite sequence in the game. If if I'm allowed to have different ones, um, because you're and it's actually continuing. It's this whole section here uh, until you get to the end. Uh, it's just, it's... I think it's the most technical sequence uh, in the entire game. Uh, it's a lot of inputs for this, for this game, uh, all in a row, and they're all pretty precise that you need to do in order to really cleanly execute. Uh, and you're constantly shifting between right side up and upside down as you're doing it. Um, so so hitting all of that uh, is, is super, super satisfying. Good job uh, getting two of those uh, waterfowl already. 
Nice. Yeah. yeah, that section is just so satisfying to hit. So there are a few more mementos left, but there are also five more of those birds that we need to find. Hopefully they're not hopefully they're not hiding too far away from us. Uh hopefully you remember where they are. Ah, it's so cool. Don't forget the bird. <laughs> yep. Speaking of. Yeah, so Aggie just skipped the entire puzzle uh, to get that memento. Just went straight to the memento itself. <laughs> it's like a 15 second puzzle. I love the singing, by the way. I can't get over that. Yeah, so that that's our final power up that we got. That is our our sing. Um, Greece has her voice back. Free insta heavy here as well. Boom. The singing is so powerful; it can shift the world. It brings the flowers back to life. Yeah. Uh, don't forget the bird. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay, sure, yeah. So I like how this part of the game, uh, we're reusing the same areas that we went to before getting the Sing power up, but now that we have the Sing power up, that opens up other the other side effectively. Um, so that's that's also different than anywhere else in the game because we are recycling the area, we're just doing it differently. Wow. So that that memento, uh, you can like intentionally bonk the ceiling to avoid flying up high, uh, but it's pretty hard to do. This is a cool skip. Uh, it, I, it's highly recommended for even the most casual speedrunner. Um, basically, what you're supposed to do is is hit those birds at the bottom, and then you would fly all the way upside down, and then have to kind of sing and climb your way back. But after you hit the birds, just mash your jump button, uh, and and you'll skip the top section. It's it's in, it's incredibly easy uh, way to save thirty seconds in your speedrun as opposed to the skip on the other side, which is just slightly harder. Yeah, d d just a little bit. But we'll, but we'll see that in a bit. Yeah. Table that discussion for like three minutes. Yeah. So we do have some, some underwater little swimmies, swimmies. Um, and a bird to get on our way back. So this is kind of like, you know, wh whether you want to say it or not, it's a little bit of the neg negative side of the level design in this game is just the way you have to traverse back uh, everywhere because it is one giant map and, you know, there's no warps from point to point is that as you traverse your way through, you do then have to traverse your way back. So Aggie uh, opened up those those two bird flowers and went over the top there instead of going through uh, the water and then up the stairs. You might be wondering why, uh, because it actually loses a second to do that. Uh, and the answer is because while it loses a second, it does save time. I just try one more time. This one's really hard, right? This one is the hardest one. Right. It's... I was I was thinking that I'm, I was like I was like wait why did you open up um, the robot if if you were just gonna skip it? But uh... at, at, it's it's a smart backup. Yeah, it's by far the hardest one, but it also saves the most time. 
isn't that always how it works? Yep. So, uh, yeah, but so opening those um, those flowers up, while it loses one second now, uh, because they're all already open, it'll actually save a second and a half later on. So collectively it saves uh, half a second. Yep, don't forget that bird. So that is the fourth one. I think there's, yes. there's, there's one more. Yeah. One more on the way back. Yep, I remember, I remember where it is. You remember where it is? Yes, I remember. Uh, okay, so we're we're coming up here. This is the bug room. It's like the flower room where it has a skip and we can avoid going upside down. But instead of being free, it is double frame perfect off of a coyote jump. So that's one cycle. Aggie just skipped a cycle there. Can you use your you can't you can't do anything to momentum. No, there's nothing to. Ah, uh, no. Nope. No. So, um, but basically, so you have one frame of coyote time. So basically, you have to walk one frame off that ledge, then jump. Uh, if you walk two frames before you jump, you'll just fall down. And if you jump before you walk one frame off the ledge, you won't get the trick. Ah, I was so close. Yep. Um. And then once you cross over, you then have to, uh, again, you know, do that, that frame perfect second jump to make it over yep. <sighs> um, to the platform. And so that avoids having to open the top bug. It avoids having to go around uh, multiple times and it saves uh, roughly 30 seconds. It's, as Aggie just mentioned, it saves the most time by far of any trick in the run, uh, but it is by far the hardest trick in the run. I have spent so, so, so many hours practicing just that trick, and I hit it like 30, maybe 30 to 35% of the time. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I and am usually about the same. Lots of practice. <laughs> for the for that one trick i will say i will say though uh i have incredible marathon success with that <laughs> trick i i would say i have hit that at least first try 50 percent of the time i've done it in marathons oh, wow. i don't know how i don't know how uh marathon but i have i yeah or uh, somehow rise to the occasion on it, but it is an incredibly hard trick. Uh, so there is there is no shame whatsoever in not getting it within a few. Hey, didn't miss a memento. Nice. Hey. Nice. Yeah, there's no shame. Like I've definitely gone, you know, ten plus times in a row without hitting it. Like it, it is it, it is that hard. This is such a beautiful uh, game. So Sorry. we are kind of just about done with main game here. Um, there's no like post game cleanup, but as I as I mentioned, if you were around at the beginning, even though we're finished with acceptance, we do have kind of two bonus areas: the the black and the purple uh, that we still need to hit. Plus, we have to watch <coughs> that cutscene that. Uh, Aggie unlocked for getting uh, all the all the Mentos. And a little bit of a cutscene here as well. As Grease is so powerful, she literally flips the world. My Making part. it right side up again. Yeah. Yes. I get emotional during this part. Ugh. So good. So it's time to watch that cutscene. 
that we've been hyping up all run. <laughs> yes. I know which cutscene it's the best one though. We're getting we're getting to that one too. <laughs> oh, oh, there, okay. There are a lot of cutscenes from here on out. <laughs> yes. Uh Yeah, I gotta start rerunning this game again. It was, it's a great run. Very chill, good time. Uh, I need to learn all the little... the optimizations, though. Ah. Uh. Oh. Yeah, the crack. The crack <laughs> is the line. <laughs> that, that diagonal crack below. Uh, if you're standing on the right side of the crack or further to the right, then it'll work. That's the visual cue for that. Grease and Mama Grease together. Yum. So we get we got knocked down. We get back up again. When we go back into cutscenes. So, you know, even even when things are good. And we think that kind of everything's gotten better. Sometimes you relapse. Sometimes, you know, you get triggered and, and something bad happens. Sometimes you're your own worst enemy. And, and things crumble apart again. So this this little area is, is the black section. Um, for whatever reason, you can't swim here. You Aggie just has to cool. slowly float to the surface yeah. as pieces of the broken statue sink down past. But we can rise above. Oh, Gotta say goodbye that? to mom, though, one last time. Yep. Bye, mom. Goodbye. Just a little platforming uh, up the statue here, uh, where once again, we will finish in a hand. But now that we have our voice, we can repair the world. Our world. And 
Everybody just enjoy the cutscene here. everyone is enjoying their feels um thank you all for chilling with us uh this evening or this afternoon depending upon where you are uh time will be coming up when the screen goes white uh which will be very very soon uh if if you like this game uh if you're looking for a chill platformer, uh, or if you're new to speedrunning and looking for a, an entry point that won't overwhelm you, uh, please check this game out. Uh, join the Discord. It's it's linked on the speedrun page. Uh, we'd love to help you. Aggie, congratulations on getting all those sweet Chivos. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. Great job. Um... While we're watching this, was there any shout outs that you would like to say, Aggie? Time. Uh, yes, I'd, li I'd like to first give a shout out to Tass. Thanks for doing the wonderful commentary. Also, a great, a very good speedrunner of this game. I'd like to also shout out the rest of the Greek Greece community. Just because, yeah, it, they are, it is a great speed game. A wonderful game to get into. And I'd love to have more people running the game. Yeah. And I'd like to thank... Uh, yeah, thank you all for ha having me on. Oh, of course. It was a pleasure and a delight. And uh, I appreciate you showing the game because... Uh, uh, just a little fun fact about me. Uh, I have lost my a parent in my life when I was at the age of three. So this game really hits hard on that. And I love the speedrun because of it. Um, and so that's why it gets to me every time. And I'm so glad that it was shown. I think this game needs a lot of love. So I'm very, very happy and honored that you both were able to do this. Yeah, of course. Uh, sorry to hear that. But glad, hopefully, this game gives you and, and others 
um, some some form of closure or experience uh, to help. It does. Uh, and uh, did you have any shout outs, Tass? Uh, no, I mean, uh, thank you, uh, Aggie, for, for inviting me on and for and to Rue for showing this game off. I uh, really appreciate it. So that's it. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, and if anyone wants to follow it, uh, you both on Twitch, uh, I know I've been doing the shout outs throughout the show, but just, uh, you know, if there's any other places to find you as well, uh, what would your plugins be for Aggie and then Tass? Uh, I'm mostly on Twitch and that's about it. So twitch.tv slash Aggie Baron. Find me there. There you go. Um, you you can find me on uh, Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, uh, a lot of other places, all under Castlefoot. I am I am this name everywhere. <laughs> and technically speaking, uh, we need to sit here and wait out the credits uh, because the achievement for beating the game does not trigger until after. The cutscene, the 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 credits all finish, and so oh. uh, the credits are. Oh, so te technically, that actually wasn't time for this category. <laughs> that's that's my bad. Every other category, when I said time, it actually was time. This category technically isn't. Uh, or you just add four minutes and four seconds to the the time because that's exactly how long the credits are in this game. I know because I've watched them enough running this category before. And I have a split just dedicated to the credits, which are the same length every single time. Four minutes and four seconds. Four minutes and four seconds? Okay. I'll get that. Yeah. So it was 150.49. To clarify. GG. Yeah. So, and the achievement, and it, and it should, as soon as it hits back to the. The main menu. I, well, I bet we'll see it pop on the screen. <laughs> should. We should. There we go. Hey, there it is. There it Safe. is. All right. It's not official until... Hold on. Let me, let me do this. I have to fix it. There. <laughs> there you go. Hey. Hey. Um... Yeah, I uh, such a beautiful game, and thank you, thank you for it's showing the... it. It's uh, it's honestly like a delight that it was on. You know, it's been on. I didn't realize it was. This will be the fourth appearance, I think. Um, yes. And so that is what's really cool about you know, and and the community is so sweet, and definitely recommend anyone who wants to learn uh, go to the to the website that I'm about to post again. Um, but definitely great people, great resources, and. Anything like that um, definitely is good to kind of, you know, you, you get involved with the community and everything like that. Uh, yeah. One thing that I did forget to mention is this game will be showcased at Frost Fatals. Yes. Yay! And you want to say more about Frost Fatals? <laughs> <laughs> Super looking forward to it. Me too. I, I we we may we may be on that. I'm playing cheapo on that one. <laughs> um, yeah, that, and then that's my backup so is Cuphead. Yeah. But yes, okay, so we are gonna get going. Um we do have a, another game, the little gator game with Clint, and it's gonna be the Eddie Percent. Um definitely stay tuned for more. We are gonna take a short break and we will be back with some more legally cute. Stay tuned. Hello everybody, this is Rue. I gotta bring my friend back, Macaroni. Um, I am the host for Legally Cute and Macaroni's not staying still, so I'm just gonna hold Macaroni for a second. Um, we are back with some more Legally Cute. It's my show that features all the cute and cozy speed runs. Um, and we are showcasing Little Gator Game. This game just came out, so it's actually really, really 
neat and cool to see a speed run of it, especially any percent, especially by someone that I think is a very talented speed runner, um, Glint. And I, before we get into the next run, I just want to kind of do a few reminders. Uh, the unapologetically black and fast submissions are open from now until January 3rd. So if you are interested, use the UBAF command in chat and you can find out more info there. And also, if you do want to follow what Games Done Quick is up to, use the command links in Twitch chat for all things GDQ. And last but not least, if uh, bleh, last but not least, if you missed the last episode or this episode and you want to watch more, you, and any of the hotfix shows for that matter too, if you are watching on YouTube, be sure to press the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, you can always go to the Twitch stream page, which is Games Done Quick, and you could be interested in watching our live content there, but you can always find our YouTube channel as well as by doing the YouTube command. Alrighty, are you ready, Glint? I am super excited. Do you, I'm let, very let's ready. Say, <laughs> yay, <laughs> and, and say hi to everybody. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is a great little game. It's super cute and quirky. And yeah, I'm gonna stop like dorking <laughs> out because it's so cute. You go ahead. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, oh, hi everybody. My name is Glint. Uh, I'm gonna be running a little gear game for you today. Uh, like Ruth said, it did come out a little bit earlier this month on the 14th of December. It was uh, published by Platonic Friends and developed by Mega Wobble. And it is a very adorable little 3D platformer with cool Zelda-like mechanics and other, other cool movement tech things. So uh, we're going to try to convince our big sister that uh, it's time to take a break from all of her schoolwork and play with us because uh, she's been focusing on that way too much, and we're going to make a cool little town for her. Um, I'm basically ready to go whenever, if you guys are. I'm ready. Uh, you can count down whenever you're ready. Okay, we'll go on go then. Uh, three, two, one, go. All right, you can see we are a little gator friend. Uh, this game has a bunch of cool little movement mechanics. We don't have too many at our disposal quite yet, but on the tutorial island, we're going to be getting some more. Uh, the basic premise of this game, like I mentioned earlier, is that growing up, we used to play with our sister. She would make us this cool adventure thing to go through. Um, we would run around, do some stuff. You can see I have a shield, a little cardboard sword. She's going to tell us a cool story. But that was a really long time ago, and time has passed, and our sister has gone off to university, and it doesn't really have time to play with us anymore. But we're going to try to convince her by getting together with all our friends and coming up with something so good that she would be distracted. Uh, and have to come play with us. So, start off, we're gonna go visit our friend Martin up on the hill and go do a quest for him. Look at his little waddle, so cute. I know, it's so adorable. <laughs> I want a waddle like that all day long, by the way. <laughs> okay, this is Martin, he's a cool guy. He wants us to do a fetch quest for him, which is everyone's favorite type of quest. For some reason, he wants us to get this pot on this hill for some reason. I'm gonna do a little slope boost, get some extra speed. All right, here's your pot. Oh, it's a shield. Look at that. <laughs> We're gonna test our big sister about it. And it turns out you can shield surf in this game. How f how neat is that? So cool. We can actually also use the shield to do little like double jump things, and we can use it to climb this cliff. And we're gonna get our first of many friends that we're gonna have to get in this game. Uh, this is Gerald. He was surrounded by cardboard, so we had to free him. It's a little stuck. Um, and the reason we need so many friends is that we're going to try and accrue a bunch of them to populate a little village to make a cool little medieval, medieval village uh, for our sister to come play in. That was Avery, by the way. She gave us our glider. Ooh, that's fine. A little bit slower to go this way, but it is what it is. And then the last ability that we're going to get in this section is our sword, which is stuck. It's not really a sword, a little bit more of a stick. And we're going to save Jill from all these evil blue monsters that are around. There you go, Jill. <laughs> Those Perfect. are evil? Yeah, they're evil. Evil cardboard. All right. And then we're going to tell our big sister about how oh, cool it is. But she's still busy and she can't come play with us. So uh, we're going to have to come up with bigger and grander plans. And that starts off by, oh, yeah, there goes Avery. Bye, Avery. Have fun. Stay safe down there. Um, <laughs> we're going to start off by uh, 
going and talking to our friends uh, and getting convincing them to play again. Also, that was Tom. Tom's a monkey, and he gave us a bracelet. Uh, it works like a stamina meter. Uh, that will be our last move I've been able to do for a while. We'll be being a little, another one a little bit later in the run, but not for some time yet. Uh, but like I said, we're going to have to get a bunch of friends. Started off with our beach friend there. We're going to have to get 35 in total in the any percent run to populate our village. Oh, get up here. This is Billy. Billy unfortunately has a bowling ball stuck in his blowhole, so we're going to help him with that. Sorry about that, Billy. Aww. <laughs> wow! Oh yeah, so we get a big boost up here. We're gonna go talk to Jill first, and Jill has a couple of friends that are working on different projects, and we're gonna help all her cool friends with their projects. First off, we have Suzanne, who's looking for some ore to make a cool weapon out of. And we also have Anton over here, who's looking for a cool little beetle. And we have... Um, Jean up here, who is looking for a rare drop from these blue monsters over here. So we're going to start off by getting rid of all of these blue monsters in the forest. And while we're doing all these quests, we're also going to be collecting scrap, which is like the little cardboard pieces. It's a bit of a currency in this game. We don't have to buy much in the 80% run. And by much, I mean literally one thing. Uh, but that one thing is very tight on the budget, so we have to make sure that we're collecting enough along the way to make sure we can buy it. Uh, we're going to get all three of these friends here by helping them organize what they want to eat because they didn't want what they wanted, but their friends did, so we kind of helped them split their meals a little bit. We're going to get rest of these blue monsters on the way back, and we're going to get our rare drop, which happens to be half a sandwich, the greatest drop of all time. Talk to <laughs> Billy. He's our friend now. Here's the ore. Look at ore being so efficient. <laughs> so much is happening in so little time. Yeah. There's I the like beetle. Oh. Oh. <laughs> There's so many friends that you're making so quickly. <laughs> yeah. I'm really charismatic that way. Yep. Okay, let's see. I, I believe I should have enough. I did. I do have enough. Perfect. And then I will get shurikens. I now have a ranged weapon. I'm going to chase this beetle around. And while I do, I'm going to make a couple friends on the way. We have uh, Trish under the well here. We're going to tell her that she has a wonderful singing voice. And we have no idea where it's coming from. We're also going to save... Pot kid who's stuck in a pot. And then we're going to go back. We kind of have all the things that we need, so we're just going to make sure that we talk to everybody. Make sure the beetle gets over to Anton over there. We're going to start with Suzanne. We're going to warm up the metal because we have to forge it into a magical weapon by melee attacking it a lot of times. You might notice uh, in this section in particular that uh, the text is going really quickly. Uh, this is something that's happening in a couple more indie games now, uh, but it's a really nice addition by a lot of devs, which is just an automatic text skip. Uh, this game was extremely match heavy uh, if it were to have it, so having just uh, something you can do to just not have to worry about the text at all is fantastic. You yeah. just kind of hold the button down, don't have to worry about your hands or anything. And that's this friend quest done. Look at that. Aw, quest complete. Yeah, and then we're going to keep going. We're going to go talk to Martin. We're going to make a couple friends on the way as well. What are you thinking of this this game so far? It's so cute, but it so is, fast. Uh, it is very... <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on all at once. Yeah, there is. <laughs> I, I know we're making friends, and we're feeding yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> we got lots of friends. We got we to gotta populate our town. Oh, okay, you're populating the town. Yeah, okay, you can kind of see it. It's like up there to our left. Okay. And basically, uh, there's a bunch of little towns that we have to fill with people, and that's why we need the 35 friends in total. Um, we get four friends for each in, finishing each of the main quests because they have like the Martin, and, like Avery, and Jill, plus the their, like three sidekicks. In mm -hmm. this case... Uh, Martin has a bunch of cool friends, and they're they're too cool for water parks. So they're we're gonna turn the water park on, and they're gonna be like, you know what? We're gonna turn the water park off. So they turned all the pumps off, and we gotta go tell them that water parks are cool, and they're gonna turn the pumps back on. Because uh, water parks are awesome, and no one's too cool for a water park. Exactly, water parks are probably top tier. Maybe exactly. maybe theme parks might beat that just a little bit. 
true. Okay, this is uh, Mr. Dobbler, if I believe. He's gonna give us our last movement ability that we're gonna get in the run. It's going to be a bubblegum. Uh, you'll see me use it in a second after I make the coolest chess move you've ever seen by sniping it from a mile away. Um, but it basically, the bubblegum will work like a triple jump and we'll be able to move around uh, a little bit better when it comes to vertical space, which will be really nice, especially in the next section. As you can see, these sections have been themed a little bit. The first section was forest themed, this section is water themed, and the last section is mountain themed. So I'm assuming you can kind of comprehend how the verticality will help. Uh, this was Lucas. Lucas just needed a little bit of convincing that talking to cool people, it's not that hard. You can just talk about them, whatever you'd like. We're gonna grab these shark teeth, they'll be useful in a second here. I will also note, um, if you are extremely sensitive to flashing, I would look away for like five seconds here. The camera switches a lot really quickly, but it's super minor. I wouldn't even think it's like something like that, but someone mentioned it the other day, so I thought it wouldn't hurt to mention now. But it'll literally be like two seconds and we're done. Perfect. That is the second valve turned on. We'll talk to the shark. These are your shark teeth. You're that welcome. The shark is cute. <laughs> uh, yeah, there are so many cute animal friends in this game. Okay, so we're going to talk to Jada next, who wants to grow this flower. So we're going to get Jada some clippings to start off. We'll help support the plant. And now we need to get some water for the plant. So we're going to go up here to the river, grab some water. Even though the plant is in a ton of water already, so it doesn't make too much sense to me, but you know, <laughs> I don't want the questions, I'm just helping. And then we're going to get rid of this junk for trash sign because it's blocking the sun to make sure that the sun can hit the flower and it can grow. Look at that. So pretty. Aww. Now we have to wait for Jada to let us talk to them again. And then we're going to head back to the main valve that we've turned all three of these back on now. Okay, and I did have a quick question from chat. Just really quick. Yes. Your casual playthrough, what is your time? What is my time? I think I beat this game probably like four or five hours. Also, I can't climb this cliff to save my life right now. I got this, I swear. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, it took me four or five hours, but that wasn't for 100% or anything. Um, that was just like my casual play there. There is one of the big draws of this game, I would say, is definitely its writing. It's absolutely adorable. You get absolutely none of that conveyed in the speed run because it's just flying past your screen in fractions of a second. But the uh, the writing is so cute, and a lot of it will be reading the story and stuff like that. So we're going to talk to our little mouse friend here really quickly to get another friend there. And hey, there's Billy again. Use Billy to get up on top of the mountain. Oh, they fell down again. There we go. And then up on here, and we're going to talk to Avery and her friends which their deal is that they all have great vision, but their visions don't align. So we're gonna come up with a cool way that we can make a vampire space uh, cowboy opera thing that they can all be a part of. So we're gonna start off by talking to uh, Esme. who wants some ice cream. So we're gonna try and get some ice cream for her. Ooh. Everybody loves ice cream, but turns out we're poor. So we're gonna have to have a conversation <laughs> with somebody. We're pretty fast texters, honestly. Oh, yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really fast. <laughs> okay, and now we have the money. We got the ice cream. Um, it might look blood flavored, but it is just black cherry. Don't worry about it. Perfect. But now we're vampires, and we can't go out in the sun, so we got to come up with a good excuse. Uh, I'm gonna go with we're very fast because we're speedrunners, and the sun can't touch us because we're so fast. Or skip a couple of rocks for this guy. Get another friend. And then up on to the whale again. And we'll talk to Andromeda, who has a bunch of aliens for us to fight. So we gotta fight all these aliens. We're gonna get a space blaster, which I don't like to use because I'm a ninja and I like to use the shuriken. And then we have to get rid of the uh, UFO that's attacking as well. Nice. Okay. Getting that blaster and the rock that we got as well also unequipped our bubble gum. So we're just going to quickly re-equip that because it is very useful to have. No, oh, I fell down. 
Okay, now we're gonna talk to everyone's favorite friend, which is Twig, because Twig wants us to do a flip, and then now they're our friend. I wish making friends was that easy. Just do a quick front flip. We're gonna talk to Velma, who has a bunch of cows on the loose. So we're going to, oh, round them all up for her. Thank you. We're gonna head this way. And we're gonna get our last friend of the run, which is Tanner. He has a bunch of invading pots that are in the way. So we're gonna get rid of the imposter pots. <laughs> and that should be our 31st friend, but we're gonna get four more from finishing the main quest, which will make us at 35 for the oh. whole run. Oh, okay. Yeah, so here's the four last ones we'll need. We're gonna tell them that all their things can work together. And then we're going to head over to the village, which you kind of seen, but haven't really seen quite yet. I love this game. It, it is, is so very cute. cute. Yeah. I got to play this. And we're going to talk to Tom down here. So he's going to tell us about the village. We were supposed to come here like way earlier, but we were busy doing speed running stuff. So... <laughs> You're like, gonna, I have other things to do. <laughs> exactly. I got friends to make really quick. Yep. So these are all the little towns that we're going to have to populate with all our friends. Each of the main towns from like for uh, uh, Marn Avery and stuff like that will all take 10, while Tom takes 5. So that's the 35 friends that we have to make throughout the run. And then after all of this is done, we're going to try and show it to our big sister. So she'll come play with us. Aww. Hopefully. Oh, that's adorable. All right. Let's try to go show it to big sis. Funny thing with the dialogue that it's so fast here that you don't even reach her by the time you talk to her. But turns out big sister just, she's got a lot to work on on our project and she's got to focus. So we're going to kind of go down memory lane here and figure out what made playing with Big Sis so special in the first place and kind of reminisce about the good old days and what made it so special. So it's kind of just like a little dream sequence where you kind of, in this case, uh, shield slide around, break some cardboard. Uh, you might recognize this section from the beginning of the game that I'm about to get to. We went through this right at the beginning of the run. Uh, but time is going to be coming up pretty quick here, actually, just as a heads up. Um, it's going to come up when I break the final cardboard piece. It's uh, a bad angle. That's fine, though. This is my home now. I'm at the bottom of the pit. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to be climbing this hill, breaking a piece of cardboard, and then going down the hill and breaking the last piece. So time will come when I break that one. So, not this one, but the one after this. I will give you a little bit of a heads up, because okay. it is very sudden. I'm going to be taking a right here. It's at the bottom of the hill, and time. Wow. We nice did change the timing time. method, so it might be a little bit faster than an estimate, but <laughs> normally we'd yeah. end at the credits, but it's like a minute and a half of dialogue, so. Oh, is it? Yeah. But yeah, that's a little gator game. Or at least any percent of later game, because there's a lot more you could do. Make a lot more friends. Defeat all the cardboard monsters around. Oh, there's a there's car. Oh, there's more cardboard monsters. That's there's adorable. a lot of cardboard monsters. But yeah, at the end of the story, we basically go tell our sister that it's okay that she's working on her schoolwork, and we know that whenever she has a time, she'll come play with us, uh, and it'll be all okay. And uh, Big Sis will keep working on her project for a little bit, but then. And she decides that, you know what, maybe she will come hang out and play and give the laptop a good little close. Oh, this is so cute. I am definitely playing this. Yeah, I would highly recommend it. It was absolutely adorable. It has like 99% positive reviews on Steam. It is a fantastic game. It is. It's so good. I recommend everyone give it a shot. Um, the, uh, the dev team, I believe, uh, Scott... Robin, and I'll see their names in two seconds here when the credits come up. I can't remember all their names. Uh, Connor, shout out to you guys. Thank you for making an awesome game. 
shout out to the devs for also um, being pretty involved in the community. They're actually working on a patch that should hopefully come out next month that will add even more speedrunning uh, like adjacent features. So they're actually going to add an in-game timer so that PC and console can run alongside each other. They're going to add uh, some more accessibility stuff. So like when I was doing the attacking under the tree, I had to do all of that manually, but they're going to add an auto attack at like max speed so you don't have to worry about mashing for that section. Um, they're going to add in-game splits, which is really cool. So shout outs to the, the devs putting in all that work. It's super awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, while you're at it, uh, was there any, did you want to do your plugins for where you stream or you showcase some speedruns? Or if anyone has any questions about any other speedruns that you do, I know you're going to be at the AGGQ coming up. So if you want yeah. to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, other shout outs. Uh, in terms of this game, I just want to quickly shout out the, the rest of the community. Shout outs to Bytes, um, who's a really good speedrunning friend of mine who I did a lot of routing with. Shout outs to Holden and um, Shovel Claws and other members of the community uh, for putting a bunch of work in. Um, shout out to the developers again for making such an awesome game. Uh, in terms of me, I'm going to be running another game at AGDQ on the 10th, at least 10th for my time. I'll be running Wavetail, which is another really, really cool 3D platformer with a bunch of cool movement. I call it Cute Solar Ash, if you've ever heard of that game. So um, maybe I'll run it on your show one day since it is another pretty cute game. I, I love cute games. I, I definitely recommend seeing more of them. Uh, I could always, I'm always going to say yes, basically. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I am very looking forward to that run, by the way. Um, yes. Definitely, uh, I recommend following Glenn. It's very, like, amazing, talented speedrunner, seeing different indie speedruns, um, especially, you know, with Sheepo, that's what we have in common. But then, yeah. you know, I've seen you with Blue... Blaze Blue? No, Blue oh, Fire. Blue Fire, yeah. <laughs> Why am I saying I a fighting game? <laughs> <laughs> I primarily run a, a lot of It Takes Two, actually. So if you're someone that likes um, co-op runs, uh, I, that game is a crazy speed run. So drop a follow for something like that. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Well, definitely, I want to say thank you for showcasing this. This is adorable, and I am totally on it. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And thank you for being on the show and showing this. And I'd love to have you on again. And definitely, um, definitely check out the AGDQ run. That's looking forward to it. I'll get the schedule for everyone just so that you can kind of see. But um, yeah. Uh, we are yeah. going to be having some more um, Legally Cute after this. Um, definitely, definitely follow the runner and definitely, you know, check out the AGGQ schedule because I, I recommend it. It's always a great time. Um, yeah. But yes, uh, thank you again for being on the show. And uh, we will be back with some more Legally Cute. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. We're going to have some more with Stonefly. Yes, thank you for having me. Stay for Stonefly too. That game is really cool. It's about bugs and mechs. Bug Max. It's so good. Hello, everybody. I'm Cutie Roo, and I go by Roo, and I am the host for Legally Cute. I have maybe been playing around with Macaroni. Um, this is Macaroni, great character from uh, Greece. Anywho, we are on the new game called Stonefly. It's going to be an amazing run featuring a very, very new runner. And I absolutely uh, adore. Uh, basically, um, I'm trying to make sure I'm going to get the right name. It's going to be Roadkill Revenge. <laughs> um, and uh, we're going to have commentary by Osborne. And they are both running Stonefly. We're going to have a race in February, and so stay tuned for that. That's going to be a lot of fun. But today, we are going to just showcase uh, Stonefly and the any percent for it, and I am looking forward to it. But before we get into um, Stonefly, just a few little reminders. I just want to remind everyone that tomorrow we are having a New Year's Eve 2022 games retrospective going on so definitely check out that one off hotfix show it's going to be a lot of fun if you are interested in seeing it you could see what is going to be happening um, on the schedule it'll start at 10 a.m est um or pst uh and it's est is a different time it's three hours ahead i always think 
I don't know. Time zones are a thing. Um, but yes, also another reminder, your subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel help support Games on Quick, both with Hotfix and with AGU, AGDQ 2023 costs. So please consider subscribing if you enjoy the daily GDQ content. Um, yeah, so we are, I'm definitely ready for the next run. Are we ready for the next run, everybody? Yeah. <laughs> At the part where we start speaking? Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. And, and here's everybody here. I have everybody on the call, and uh, we're going to have some fun. The runner is Roadkill Revenge, and then the commentary is Osborne. Um, if you all could say hi. <laughs> hey, what's up? It is I, Roadkill Revenge. Hello, everybody. My name is Osborne. And yeah, we are here today going to sh be showing a game that we both love dearly, and it is this lovely indie game called Stonefly. Um, I'm going to be running the any percent category, which is the main category that we've been running for this game. And yeah, it's a really awesome platformer with a lot of really cool stuff to show off, and so I'm really, really excited to be here and show it off to you all. Um, so I guess if we're ready to go, I can get the run started here shortly? Yeah, whenever you're ready. All right, so... This run is going to begin in three, two, one, go. Good luck. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so yeah, you want to start us off explaining, uh, just give us the pitch for the game. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah, so Stonefly is an amazing indie game that's currently only $5, so you should go buy it right now. Um, and it is a game about a girl named Annika. And right now, at the beginning of this game, she is just finding little um, tools for her father and um, building this mech. That's kind of like the, the job that, that uh, he has of, of building uh, mechs and stuff and stuff like that. He's kind of like an engineer of sorts. And so uh, starting off, we're just going to be doing some pretty basic movement here. Um, but the main gist of this game is a lot of resource management and a lot of really interesting movement through the mech that we're going to be doing. Um, and we're going to be seeing the mech's uh, main mechanics right after this specific cutscene, after Annika goes to bed. Um, and we're going to have a really interesting plot development after this small tutorial section known as Krissa. Uh, but right after yes. getting through this first cutscene, she's going to go into this mech, which, uh, belongs to, which is named after her mother who passed away. And this is the mech that is personally belongs that personally belongs to her father. And right off the bat, you can see that Rhodey is doing some pretty basic movements, such as uh, blink, which is the immediate dash forward, but it's kind of like much quicker than the dash movement that we'll see later, as well as the uh, dip uh, every now and again, um, as well as mining. Um, and so mining uh, ability that we're going to be seeing a lot throughout the run. These are just basic abilities that we're going to be uh, utilizing a lot uh, right now, um, and especially when we get our own mech later in the game. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but I totally messed up the opening tutorial and forgot to turn in one of the items. <laughs> that was something I've never done before, so that was really funny. Um, but yeah, so this is the tutorial segment, and we're right now just about to enter the first of the combat sections in this game. Um, you might have noticed a big red dome sort of fall down over the arena. That essentially signifies that this is a fight we cannot leave until we finish. Um, and a lot of the run is going to be, a lot of the routing in this run in general is just uh, figuring out the best way to avoid having to do these. Um, but this particular one we do because these minerals here are really valuable, especially this early in the run. Yeah, these specific minerals are called Limadot. After this specific uh, tutorial section, Krissa, you want around 3,400 Limadot. And the way that you get out of these specific encounters that we're going to be seeing here is you need to get rid of all the hostile enemies. The definition of hostile kind of changes depending on the encounter that you're in. But overall, if you just want to know what all the hostile enemies are, you just have to press down on your D-pad and the game will show you. Um, overall, those tiny bugs that we saw at first, they will not harm you. They will not be considered hostile for the rest of the game. That is only just for tutorial purposes. But those other bugs that we saw, those popcorn bugs as they're called, um, they will actively go out uh, of the way to harm you if the they see you. Scissor scarabs. Oh, scarabs. Okay. I'm, I found out right. recently we've been calling them something wrong this entire time. <laughs> oh, really? Well, I'm going to keep, keep calling them popcorn bugs. That's the popcorn headcanon bugs in my, are in a my different, heart. Popcorn bugs are a different bug. Yeah. Wait, really? What? I have been misinformed <laughs> yeah. this entire time. Okay. <laughs> Routing 100% has given me new information about right. the bug lore. Um, oh, and the really goodness. interesting thing about this game is it is a platformer, but it's a very unconventional platformer. Um, because instead of running around and jumping off of platforms, by default, I am just drifting through the air and landing for the purposes of mining these mineral deposits. And um, 
A lot of the minerals in this game are RNG. The great thing about this tutorial segment and why we spend a lot of time getting all of these minerals is because they are guaranteed. Uh, basically anywhere where mineral deposits are guaranteed, we stop and take them because there's a lot of places where they are not guaranteed. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But usually in this particular section, there's a, there's a lot of guaranteed minerals here. Um, and getting 3,400 is not very typical. Um, thankfully, she got really decent RNG here. Um, and yeah. these uh, these little uh, these little bugs that we had here, they usually um, come in groups. The ideal RNG is all six of them being on the same leaf, but two of them being on one leaf and four on the other. That's pretty good. Um, but she is just going to be cleaning up the minerals that we find on this leaf, on the Lima dots. And as you can see on the left side of the screen, um, the number is going to be uh, rising up as she um, as uh, she grabs them. And you're going to see that when she's um, mining minerals, she's going to be moving around a lot because the more you move and switch between mineral deposits, the faster that they mine. Yep, and I was a little bit short of my goal of 3,400 Limadot. Um, that's actually okay because there's going to be lots and lots of places to make it up later, um, depending on sort of what RNG we get. Um, this is actually a pretty RNG heavy game, but on average, we're just getting such like large numbers of minerals that it tends to even out and be pretty predictable overall. Um, now, mm -hmm. if you just watch one of our previous uh, the previous runs on this show, Greece, um, there was some talk about how speedrunners have a tendency to uh, find cute little um, characters without names in the game and give them names of their own well this is our version of that this would be uh, our lovely grasshopper friend named kevin so we love Aww. kevin a lot uh <laughs> kevin uh, please enjoy kevin's presence he will be here for around 10 seconds and that is it oh, um okay. <laughs> and uh, you might be thinking that kevin is easy to control um he is not um, he does not like to go in a straight line, so you have to constantly um, adjust your movement for him. Um, overall, with some practice, it gets uh, pretty easy after you get used to it. Um, but after He's this particular Wiggly section, boy. He, yeah, um, we're that's all that's all we're gonna see of Kevin. Um, he's not dead; he's just gone. Um, Everyone feel like say bye, Kevin. Bye, Kevin. We love you. <laughs> I love we'll you. We'll never forget you. Yeah. And uh, this specific encounter. Um, you can see that Roadkill is not going to be grabbing any of the minerals. Oh my um, god! She... Oh, that was really that, good RNG. That was amazing, actually. <laughs> um, really good enemy RNG right there. As you can see, the boom bugs. Um, she was able to um, open the wings of those because they're only vulnerable if you have their backs exposed. That was um, really most, fast. Yeah. Most importantly here, um, she did not collect any minerals because at the end of that particular encounter, you will always leave with a set amount of minerals no matter what, how much you collect. Um, so... That's uh, that's the B. That's the main chunk of the of the first section of this game, and we're gonna go into our first main area after this cutscene is over. Yep, this is a little unskippable cutscene here where our new friends that we just met, who are called the Acorn Corps, um, essentially we just rescued them after they got attacked because they were mining those minerals, and in exchange they gave us a handful of those minerals and also this old junker that they have laying around, which we are gonna be upgrading over the course of the rest of the run. Because Inika's dad is like a renowned mech repair guy, and she's picked up some of his skills along the way. So, I'm gonna be doing a quick little skip here to get. Oh my God, that is! Oh. I've never seen that happen before. I have. Um, that's happened to me before. Okay, <laughs> that was news to me. Um, I I was not doing that movement. That was the game decided. She she just wanted a little walkie walk. That's fine. You gotta get that um, exercise in somehow. Yeah, I mean, you know, driving a mech, you gotta you gotta stretch them legs. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, essentially, I um, uh, what I did right there was I built a couple upgrades for the mech. Um, we're going to be getting very specific upgrades over the course of the run. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can sort of customize and build and improve this mech. Um, but I'm going to be going for... Um, two types of upgrades. Uh, one set of upgrades are required to complete the run or to go through certain story checkpoints. And there's other upgrades, though, that just help us go faster. Um, and we'll, I'll be able to explain those as I buy them. Um, and so I just got jump and break, which is going to allow us to jump and break. And so now I have a mech that has a lot less uh, abilities than the one that I had um, earlier in the tutorial. Uh, because that mech actually got stolen, which is what we're trying to do now, is we're trying to figure out um, how to get it back. Yes. So, so this is where the RNG begins. Mm -hmm. And you seem to be having decent RNG so far. Decent, I've definitely had a lot worse, even though now it seems totally good. Um, I'm aiming to have such around 2,000 Loranite and around 500 Dalium at the end of this section. There's a bunch of different minerals in this game that are used for just different upgrades. 
um, accidentally. Five hundred. The, the notes totally say one hundred fifty. You're way 150. over. One fifty. Yeah. I was thinking of the next split. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> Thank you for that correction, because I would have been like, "Wow, I'm low." Um, yeah. And yeah, so uh, we're talking about the the notes. Um, I have a spreadsheet open on my other monitor right now to help remind me um, what minerals I need when so that I'll know if I have enough. And also I'll know when to stop mining for minerals I don't need uh, because that takes time and we're trying to mm -hmm. go fast. Um, yeah. And uh, in this particular encounter, we get introduced to a, a new bug that has like a long snout and shoots uh, projectiles out of it. Um, and so yep, they overall, are in fact called long snouts. Long snouts. Um, thank you for actually correct. I I always just name the bugs whatever name um, comes out of my heart. Um, and so thank you for actually giving me uh, like Kevin. factual information. Uh, yes, exactly. Um, but you had pretty good RNG there. A lot of the enemies were grouped up together. Um, yeah, that's to the far left. Well. Um, what she's going to be doing right now is she's going to be grabbing this uh, uh, fast travel location that we're going to be coming back to later. And then as this cutscene plays out with the Shoemaker's assistant, unfortunately the Shoemaker himself was not there, um, um, we are going to be looking around for more minerals we can get. We're kind of low on Dalian, but Ooh. oh, oh, speak of the devil. Look never at that. mind. Uh, never <laughs> mind. And, um, that was really good luck. Yeah, this particular section has been pretty Very good. Very head on Laura Knight. Yeah. Um, and uh, this particular mech that we're going to be having is a, um, a mech that we're going to be upgrading a lot throughout the, the rest of the run and uh, get more and more really cool abilities and mechanics as the game progresses. But um, now we're yep, at so the Jensen Trail. Yeah, this is Jensen Trail, which is one of... Um, this game is sort of broken up into three sort of more open world areas. I'm being a little bit extra safe. I wouldn't normally be getting this much Dalium right here. Um, but there are levels that are more linear, and there's levels that are more open uh, that you can return to more frequently. This is one of the linear levels. And so I'm going to be doing different tricks to skip these fights that I would normally have to defeat all of the um, enemies to get through. If you want to explain what I just did. Yeah, and so what essentially she just did was she um, grabbed all the Lorenite there because we want to get the uh, the Lorenite deposit set for, you know, at the end of this section. And then at the um, at the very end of that um, encounter, she just grabbed the checkpoint on the other side because she's, um, well, I do the same thing for this next encounter that's coming up, but I know that Rody, um actually physically goes around the hitbox for this next encounter. Um, but you can actually just um, grab a checkpoint if you if you uh, touch an encounter and then reset the check to checkpoint and the game will just uh, pop you in at the other end. Uh, meanwhile, um, the majority of the time that we're going to be doing skipping encounters of this run is doing what Rudy did just now, which is we're going to be physically flying around the um, hitbox for said encounter so that we do not trigger it at all. Yes, indeed. So, um, so yeah, so essentially a lot of my movement is going to be um, weird looking because I'm going to be taking weird paths to fly around um, hitboxes basically that are invisible. Okay, so this is my least favorite encounter as in it the is. whole run. As it is for me as well. It's uh, uh, the these guys part. are jerk, jerk faces, and they're being, they're doing what they do. And uh, essentially, what I'm trying to do here is bait them over to the edge of the arena. That actually Ooh. was great. Um, one Beautiful. of them got away though, so I'm just going to fight him normally. But they're they're really. The, the enemies sort of act like bugs. Uh, fun fact, they uh, really. Yeah, they uh, they are sort of unpredictable. And, I couldn't uh, believe it. Yeah, yeah. so um, I'm essentially going to be scooping up some of these minerals, but not all of them, and you'll see why in just a moment. Yeah. Um, Those uh, enemies that we encountered are called the engine grubs. They just um, walk around rapidly and just. Um, uh, charge at you from uh, amazing speeds. What I usually like to do is I like to just grab minerals um, as they're charging at me and just bait them into coming towards me, um, just sitting on the ground. Um, and sometimes it works. Uh, a lot of times it, it works for me. Um, but I can see that uh, Rody has a little bit of a different approach here, which is the beauty of this kind of game where you can actually do a lot of different approaches and they're all pretty similar in time. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of room for player expression yeah. for sure. Also, um, just to just to kind of have a short, can I have a little bit of a pause really quick at a good point? Yeah. Um, is it possible? I'm gonna just send you a message really quick, just a really really quick message. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, if we're having um, technical difficulties, I wouldn't mind to take a quick little break and make sure it's fixed. Yeah. Well, we won't take a break. It's just more of a just really really quickly. Um. There you go. I got it. I just wanted to kind of just let you know, um, and then we'll be good to go once you're ready. 
Okay, sure. All right, that should be fixed, and let's see um, if we can keep this run going. Yes. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I essentially took a little a little detour there after I started a cutscene. Because while the cutscenes are going, a lot of them, um, you can still move around, in the, even though you can't skip the cutscenes. And so at a lot of different parts in this run, um, I will be starting a cutscene and then moving around to get minerals and things like that. So that's what I, I did there, is I got up there to start this cutscene with the Shoemaker, and then I came back to this platform that I was at earlier, and that way I can uh, clean up these minerals that I left behind. And I'm actually doing very, very good. I'm tiny bit behind on Dalium of my goal, but overall, I am uh, doing pretty good on minerals. Um, so after this, I'm going to be buying some things. I'm going to be buying pressure mold, three of these and one of these, and selling a bunch of sellable items. Um, again, these are all just things that have been worked out based on the math of what I know I need when. Um, I'm going to be buying dash and mining speed. Uh, this is probably intuitive, but dash, as you're about to see, is a lovely little dash that I'm going to be using a whole lot in this run. Um, and mining speed makes mining more speedy. So yeah, we're trying to go fast. So I'm <laughs> yeah, going to begin that. Yeah. <laughs> I love the descriptions. I love the descriptions that you have of abilities. I'm just like, this is an ability. It does the thing that it says that it does. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and oh, that's my it. Atlanta. I um, love that, by the way. That it's just like, here's the thing that does the actual thing that is supposed to be the thing that does it. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's uh, that stump is a place that I like to sort of just make a pit stop on my way to where I'm going. Um, because this next area, I'm going to be having set amounts of stuff I'm looking for. And. Uh, Essentially, it just makes it safer. The more little pit stops of minerals that I have the opportunity to grab, I'm going to take them. Um, yeah. That rock is really dangerous, though. It tends to spawn lots of like really mean enemies. Um, uh, but yeah, essentially what I'm doing right now is I am moving towards the mountain, which is a big cold area in the game. Um, I'm trying to follow the alleged thief of the mech. And, uh, um, but alas, my mech, my mech is a junker, and so I'm going to get frozen. And so now Bless. I'm going to have to build um, some new stuff to be able to make it through. You want to explain what I'm doing here? Yeah, so this is either a blessing or a curse, depending on how the game's feeling today. Um, and it is... Every, we have to find alpha tracks, and looks like the game was really generous to you today. My goodness, um, that's so the, the best alpha, possible RNG. It yep. is um, the alpha tracks. Essentially, what you need to do is um, they allow you to track alphas. Surprise, surprise! Um, and the alphas are alpha efforts. There are these big buggy boys right here with a bunch of minerals on their back. But every time that she reloaded the game, um, there's a alpha track in a specific spot that we already knew. Originally, you would have to play some sort of like mini game where you have to follow a specific fly around the map in order to find out where the track is. We don't have time for that, so we just do it ourselves. Yep. Meanwhile, uh, since all the okay. spawns are preset, so we can essentially just refresh until the RNG gives us what we want. It's way mm -hmm. faster than doing it as intended. Yeah, exactly. And so uh, I'm going to be focusing for this. So yes, of course, I can take I can take over. I, I figured you wanted a bit more focusing time on this one. Um, right now, what she is doing is she is doing the very first uh, alpha aphid that we're going to be encountering in the run. We're going to be encountering three of these. This is the first one. Um, right now, it has three minerals. It has uh, lauranite, it has dalium, and it has dinatite. According to our notes, after this particular alpha, you want 2,000 dina dinatite, 600 dalium, and a whopping 13,334 lauranite. Yes, that is a very specific number, and it does have a purpose. Um, and at the end of this alpha, we want to have that many minerals. Usually, they're pretty easy to get, aside from the dalium. In my opinion, the dalium is the hardest one to get, just because they yeah. mine very slowly. It's um, also the safest one to be short on, though. So yes, exactly. Um, and if she has time, she's going to be going to the top of the head, where there's going to be a little bit of pyotite, which is an incredibly rare mineral that we're going to be using later throughout the run. But overall, as you can see, not only does this, uh, do the alpha, alpha aphids have a lot of minerals, they also have a lot of enemies. These enemies are going to be constantly trying to uh, attack you and also grab minerals for themselves. Um, and they will progressively get harder as the alpha goes on, and we're going to have harder enemies on later alphas as well. And the worst, uh, the best slash worst thing is just like it's very easy to die, especially if you're not experienced. But it, if you are experienced, you can actually use um, dying to your advantage by if you get all of the minerals before um, the timer runs out um, and you think it's going to be quicker to die, it'll just send you immediately back to camp um, instead of having to uh, wait for the timer to, uh, to finish like we did here. 
All right, so I, I I did very, very well on that APA. I'm actually ahead on all three of the things I had to collect, which is really nice. So Amazing. I'm going to be able to build everything that I need and be a little bit safer on the next segment as well. So that's really nice. Yes. I've been having really bad luck on the first and second APIs lately, so I'm really pleased about that. Yes. Uh, right now, what you just bought was the snow shell design, which allows us to uh, withstand the cold and is there for story purposes, essentially. The pool design, which I know that she uses and I don't, which is why she has a world record and I don't. Um, <laughs> and the arrow design, which is the best thing to ever come out of this game. Yeah, so now I've gotten some more movement tech. Uh, Arrow's really great. Uh, also, uh, as you can see, this segment is really bright, so if you have light sensitivity, just fair warning for that. Um, it gets a little bit brighter here in a moment even, if you can believe it. Um, but Arrow essentially is, is an ability that lets me just hold a button and fly faster, so I'm going to be holding that button for the rest of the game. But what it also does is it lets me to combine it with the dash that I got earlier to do that little movement that you just saw me do, uh, which is just this little air dip, which gives you a really nice forward burst of movement at the expense of height. So you can't use it everywhere. You have to have enough height to be able to make whatever gap you're trying to make. Um, but it's going to be something that lets us really get schmoovin'. Mm-hmm, exactly. Um, in a um, in a casual playthrough, you can actually um, color this mech all the colors that you want. That's four different color options. Um, but of course, for speedrunning purposes, we just have a, a, a white mech on a white background in a snowy area. Um, so there's a lot of white on screen right now. Um, yeah. And right now in this particular section, um, we are climbing uh, these this snowy area with a man that has no mech. Um, he is on a journey to discover himself, which for some reason is an incredibly confusing concept to Annika. Um, She's a teenager. She's like, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but why? <laughs> yeah. And um, this is kind of just a story section. We already know the preset path that we're supposed to be taking for this um, for this section. And so it's just pure movement. There's no minerals. There's no enemy combats. It's just getting from point A to point B. Pretty much the easiest part of the run. Yep, and so I successfully made it to the top of this area, which I'm about to be entering, called the Maple Canopy. This is probably my favorite area in the run. It's just really pretty. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, this particular split called the Thief, this could either be like a pretty decent split or just a really quick split, depending on if the game wants to give us minerals or not. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be very similar to the Nightlight Briar segment from earlier. I'm going to be looking for Alpha Aphid tracks on the way this time, though, Oof. as opposed to... And the first check uh, is did not give us um, no such luck. I'm also going to be checking just about every place where minerals can spawn on my path here so that I can get ahead again to make the next Aphid a little safer. So I got a little bit of Lima Dot. In an ideal world, I'm going to have 4,000 Lima Dot at the end of this, uh, but that doesn't usually happen from my experience. I'm going to go ahead and just take what I've been given and scoop up all. I'm very, very head on Dynatite. But what that means is... You are. Um, because I'm very, very head on Dynatite, that means that when I get to the next Aphid, I am going to be able to not have to get as much Dynatite. So it's basically, you know, it evens out to being just as good as getting Lima Dot here. But I got at least a little bit. That's nice. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like I've gotten good on tracks, so... Um, oh, great. So no Amazing. backtracking, hopefully, will be required through here. Sometimes all of those spots that have those tracks, and, and they may be sort of hard to see, um, um, they, they're not guaranteed to be there. But there's a lot of checks that we can make on the way. Mm -hmm. And now we are going out of... Uh, the, we're going to be getting the trading outpost that we might be using later, depending on if, um, if you actually do that strat or not. Um, but... Uh, right now we're going to be going to Bull's Hollow, and one interesting thing about Bull's Hollow is that there is a lot of encounters there, and we're going to be skipping all of them. Um, you're going to be seeing right here, she's going to be doing one. some weird movement um, there, and that is just her physically going around the, the hitbox for uh, these encounters, and you're going to see her do it twice more. Um, ooh, Lima Dot. You check hmm. there? I never check that. shiny. I, I usually check that rock, yeah. Yeah, I, I never check that rock. Um, I check a lot more rocks than you do because um, breaking the rocks can drop um, they can drop mineral deposits like that. They can drop loose minerals in the air. Uh, they can also drop sellable items, which are sellable for like a lot of minerals. They're very, very efficient way to get them. It's just not super uh, reliable. Uh, they can also drop items that I'm going to be crafting later. And so if you get really lucky and get a couple of those in the run, it can save you a ton of time because you need a lot less minerals. Yeah, and right there, she just skipped another encounter by going around it on, on bouncing on that yellow and brown leaf. Um, and now we're going to be going into an, an encounter, which you theoretically could skip, but you do have to do 
um, in order for the loading zones to be there. But you can physically go around the hitbox for it. Um, and so uh, that's just information that we have. But the enemies that we're going to be ha ha having here are the bull beetles. Um, they are um, your worst enemy or your best friend, depending on how they feel. They can be um, your angle or your double. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that first one, that There's encounter three, that we have right there is exactly how we want it to go. And now we have to deal with Dermot at the same time. Look at that. Um, it, that seems like you have it. it seems like you have it pretty handled. Oh, come on. One more. Okay, one I'm going to go ahead and get these two. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh. oh. salvaged. So okay. Oh no, wrong way! No! No! <laughs> Go no. away! Thank you! Okay, that the was bull a... Bull beetles. That, that, that's just bull right. beetles be like that yes. sometimes. Um, the best thing that can happen though is like when all the bull beetles are in a group and then that boom bug that's in there just uh, like damages them and then they all like pass out at the same time. You can just pull them off. Um, right here, we're gonna get some solar coil, rain wire, and a pebble rivet. Um, that we're going to be using to upgrade a few really good stuff. Bubble, which is an amazing ability that is both required but also incredibly useful. And then mining speed level two, because we're going to be going straight into another alpha in which we're going to be having three um, new minerals. Actually, no, two new minerals. Sorry, no, only one. What am I saying? It's I'm, just the I, one. Don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to do math today. There's a lot um, of them in the game. It's yeah, <laughs> a lot of right. shiny, shiny There's things only one. to pay attention um, to. A lima dot, um, which we want around, uh, let me tap back 9, into the notes. 9,000, you're right. Um, we want around 9,000 lima dot for that. Um, we want around 2,400 dynatite, and we want around 1,200 phonical. And ironically though, uh, despite the fact that we only need uh, like 1,200 phonical, phonical is actually the most important mineral um, that we want to get on this alpha, um, even though we have only to get like a really, really small amount of it. Because if you do not get Fonagal on this particular alpha, the only way for you to get more Fonagal is um, to do the alpha again, which is essentially just a dead run, especially if you're like having a really optimized time. Um, and that's just no fun at all. But you do need Fonagal ah. because you do need it for a specific quest that we're gonna be doing uh, later in the game. Uh, and the, the, this is pretty much the only location that you have to get them. Uh, meanwhile, with the, the um, Dynatite and the and the um, and the Limonot, they're more easy to, to back up because you can find them in different places in the in the, in the maple canopy. Yep, exactly. Um, but I am good on Fonical. It's actually Limonot that I am dramatically uh, running short on. So only need around two thousand more. And thankfully, she was able to get the pie tied up on the head as well, which is a little uh, bit of be, it anyway. Yeah. Oh, it respawned me in a really weird place. Um, I'm definitely worried about Limonot. Um, it's not so low. So one thing you can do with this is there is a way to do the alphas again without having to get tracks. But hopefully, um, we're not gonna have to explain that until later in the run. I think I'll be okay. Even if I'm a little short on Limonot, I, I think I'll be alright. I think this is gonna give you just enough. Or not? Very so close though. Yes, perfect. Okay, that was very close. Oh, cutting amazing. It, cutting it very, very close. Yeah, but um, we, okay, we got so... all the checkpoints we needed. Oh, will you now. get the skip? Wait, what? Oh, wait, she spoke. Okay, oh, there we go. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. <laughs> wait, what? what are you doing? It, uh, try and explain the skip while I'm trying to get it to work again. I messed it okay. up, I think. I'm gonna yeah. give up, I'm just not gonna not do it. Uh, okay. So there's a skip there. So this is a cutscene, basically, where she'll just talk to me about um, fixing her mech for her. Um, if you turn in the resources for that cutscene or for this checkpoint while there is a dialogue bubble open whether it is annika saying it or if it is her saying it um and then you turn in the minerals you can run back to your mech um and then get in it to go to the next area before the cutscene starts and skip it um it's a little bit finicky though i i hesitated because the dialogue bubble that opened was sort of short and i wasn't sure if i was going to have enough time so i closed it to reshuffle it and then i just didn't get another dialogue so i just went ahead and just did it the normal way that's what i was doing that's why that's why i made on so confused <laughs> yeah i was just i was just like okay, you, uh, you had it yeah. she said something what are you doing <laughs> Yeah, I, that was that was just me being a goober. It's fine. Um, uh, but it is what it so is. So I'm going around another encounter here. This is one that, oh my goodness, that might be the first time in my life that I have ever gotten that one first try. It's not that hard. 
I'm just bad at it, so that's a bit. I mean, yeah. I'm, um, I'm happy about that. And right now, she's going to be using. She's going to be really showing off the arrow ability, um, and just just spamming um, the 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 dash button here that we can yep. use with the. So. This level is pretty long and has a lot of really hard fights in it. As it turns out, you can just climb up this uh, this really tall branch and then just fly to the end. So that's mm. what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Uh, and one thing to note about this game, too, is the camera angle is fixed. I'm not doing this weird camera movement. I just sort of have to remember what direction I'm going based on, like, the current camera position. Um, so figuring out what is a straight line is a little tricky sometimes, but, uh, but we got there. I just had to get one of that very specific mineral that's all we did that for yeah so. now we're gonna get the blue wave core to repair clara's yep and this is another here. unskippable cutscene mm -hmm. yeah yeah and um that first skip that we could have had with the unskippable cutscene um ironically the world record currently does not have it but it does say like 40 seconds um yeah it's uh, it's pretty it's relatively speaking a pretty new uh pretty new situation yeah yeah um and it's hard to get sometimes sometimes it just sometimes it won't happen because there's only a specific percentage chance that like annika and annika or clara will say something and yep um so if the game just isn't feeling like it it, it won't happen um but this cutscene yep. unfortunately we don't have a way to skip it's yet <laughs> yet um, but yeah, so as soon as this is over, I'm going to build one more thing, which is Blink, which is another mobility ability. Um, there's a lot of different new movement tech. Honestly, um, as a casual player, that was one of my complaints about the game, actually, is that there's so many different movement options, and like half of them are like on the same button. <laughs> um, and it took me so long to figure them all out. Uh, but it does mean that there's like a lot of room for interesting movement and a lot of room for player expression as well in terms of the patterns and when you use different stuff and how you manage their cooldowns and that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, we kind of been exploring that with speedruns as well because when we compare the things that I do versus the thing that Rody does, Rody does dramatically different things than I do. Except I like to make the jokes that anything that I do is objectively wrong because my PB is like four <laughs> minutes slower than his. All right, so now <laughs> it is time for the mid-boss, the Wind Mantis. The Wind Mantis. You can theoretically, uh, I, I, you, mantis. You, you, you could do the skip. I don't think you should, but you could. I've never gotten the skip on this boss, so <laughs> uh, we'll talk um, about the skip a little bit more later, and you'll yeah. see why. And by uh, a little later, we mean at the very end of the run. <laughs> at the very end, yeah. Um, the way this boss works is that it has a couple different attacks it can do. It can do this ground pound, which is what we want it to do, because when the ground pound happens, uh, a bunch of rocks fall from the ceiling, which we can use to push into the boss and do damage. Uh, it's a pretty clever way of like using some of the other mechan- Where? Come on, buddy. Okay. He He's gone. Like, it's, uh, he's yeah. But yeah, God. we just need to uh, shoot the, uh, uh, shoot these rocks into into this wind mantis's face and right then and there just Whee. pushing him off the arena we'll oh, be no. able to uh, finish the encounter what just what just happened what i uh, <laughs> I, I hit a branch you I hit guess. a branch okay okay i see uh -huh. um but yeah sometimes when the when the mantis ground pounds a rock will fall on him which is really good rng um but a lot of the rng dependent stuff is a how the mantis acts and b how um how uh, the rocks are uh, oriented in the arena um i have seen the world records that um roadkill has done and i think in almost every single one of them she has like a godlike wind mantis it's like so fast the way that she does them because the rng and just her overall execution is really good um she's going to be buying four alloy droplets and a photosynthesizer before this cutscene begins so we don't have to buy yep. them later um, yep. and uh, I just got them, and it's, that's actually something that if uh, if you're not fast enough grabbing those, the cutscene will just start and kick you out of the menu. All, the only time it saves is the time it takes to walk between the mech and Clara over here, the shopkeeper. Um, but it's still uh, it's time. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Did you already have alloy droplets? Did I did I miss that? No, did yeah, you? I did not. I, I've had actually very uh, not great RNG this run in terms of. Um, prefabbed items that I've gotten in drops, mm -hmm. but yeah, exactly. I'm Shout gonna be out. Uh, doing a check here to see how I'm at with my yeah. minerals. Oh, you're you're I've, so good. 
I believe I'm actually a little bit behind on Lore Knight. Is that true? Oh, really? I, you I, need, I think I need 2,000. Yeah. Let me check. At the end yes, of... Do. You do? do? Oh, my God. Well, is there Lore That's Knight fine. It, I'm a tiny bit short. I'll be able to make it up. It's not a problem. Um, ooh. Um, so this is actually a pretty chill level. It's another one where I'm going to be using some interesting new movement tech, which is lift, which, as you might imagine, lets me get lifted into the air and gain some height, which, combined with this little dive dash thing, is uh, is really useful. Ooh, that's mm -hmm. actually cool. Yeah. And usually in a lot of other places where we're just gliding through the air, we want to um, spam the air ability with the da like the dashing with the air ability. But in this particular section, you actually don't want to do that because you're every time that you do that, you lose a little bit of height and you want enough height to get past this branch right here. Yep, that branch. Um, but I, so I essentially I took it really safe. You can use the dash a little bit there, but if you lose too much height there, um, it's recoverable, but it's very difficult to recover without accidentally triggering a combat encounter that I don't want to do. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, we're just doing this. We're just in this B plot right now with with our side character, David. Yeah, this um, is a very interesting B plot considering just how much time. It's like a third of the game, and it's this totally unrelated to the main plot thing. Mm -hmm. um, I sort of love it, though. So this guy, David, is taking us on a wild goose chase for some tool that we're supposed to need to be able to build upgrades that let us go through the marsh. But he's being really cagey about it, and it, it's it's, uh, it's 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 a bit weird. So Yeah, it is. <laughs> also, are we ever... Did they ever explain where Ravenwood is at this time? Uh, no. I don't know where she's at right now. It's, like, it's a mystery to me. Like, did they ever explain that? <laughs> I don't know. I, I um, forget. I also saw a question. There's a question about whether the game is, is, is has the slow frame rate or if it's a stream. It's a stream. Um, and I just want to apologize about that. Uh, it's just, I, it just happens sometimes. Um, so I'm going to be um, going to the Sarto tree now, which is actually the only level where right now um, that we go out of bounds. Um, it's pretty easy to go out of bounds in this game. Go some oob. Um, but ironically, the out of bounds does not look as out of bounds as many other games. Is out of bounds. Yep, look like. You can see some checkered patterns and stuff, but uh, you know. And that's that's about it. That's all you're gonna get. Um, <laughs> no so, voids and um, or level geometry. That yeah, just some weird textures and invisible walls and things. And doing mm -hmm. this essentially allows me to skip. Um, a couple other of those encounters I was talking about. And this level has probably the most difficult fights in the game, especially with how, like, under... Not under-leveled, but how, like, under uh, underpowered we are. Um, mm -hmm. So... Skipping them is good. Just gonna be doing some yeah. weird movement here. Um, this one's really finicky. You sort of have to go over that green rock. If you don't do that, um, it's very easy to trigger this fight on accident, um, but I oh, got it, okay? I've, yeah, I've done that before. And if you trigger pretty much, and since you don't grab any checkpoints, if you trigger anything, you essentially have to start the entire level over. And we promise you, in starting the entire level all over is still faster than doing the encounter. Yep. Um, I just remembered that I'm short on Loranite, and luckily on this tree, I got a really juicy Loranite deposit. Ooh, so that's beautiful. I am now good. Um, right. Lots you of backups see. in that way. If you're short on X or Y, there's ways to recover on the way, and if there's not, a lot of them you can backtrack for and not lose true. too much time. That's true. I also think there's Loranite. Isn't there Loranite in the final encounter of this area? Question mark? Uh, I could be wrong. No, there's not. Nope. Oof, yeah, I'm spreading misinformation on the internet, my bad. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, this is a pretty chill um, chill moment. Um, I like to use this moment to shout out the developers, too. Um, when we approached them and let them know we were speedrunning this game, they gave us just like a wealth of information and showed us a bunch of new skips, um, including this one. I uh, used to uh, do, just do this fight like normal, uh, which is really long fights. Um, and But now I can just go around it. Um, that's why we need to um, create all encounters. One of us is going to have to run that at some point. <laughs> yes, new categories. Let's go. No, but we still have to refine 100% before we do that. Um, true, true. Yes, true. But she's going to be grabbing some I'm more pie. Yeah, we're going to be grabbing <laughs> some more pie height here. Um, and yes. some other minerals that we could be back using for later. Um, and after this section, we're gonna go to East Marsh, but first we're gonna be buying a um, hardened crystal, and we're gonna be um, buying the spark design, which is another design that I don't use, but I know that Rody does to gain some extra height after using lift every now and again. Um, and so, 
it's uh it's definitely something that I should probably use uh considering that you know it's faster it is faster <laughs> yeah. and it's also really fun to do once you sort of figure out how to do it um so now at this point i have every uh sort of movement tech ability uh, that I'm going to be using in the run, and I'm going to be combining them in really interesting ways here in a moment to just zoom through the East Marsh, but also I'm going to be continuing to look for Alpha Aphid tracks um, along the way. This one is the one that I usually don't get the first time through, and there we go. There's that uh, the height boost I was talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also going to be breaking rocks along the way because they can... Starting in this area, pyotite, the gold mineral that we keep talking about taking detours for, um, it can start spawning here, and I'm about to need 800 of it uh, at this next moment. And unfortunately, none of the along the way checks have tracks, so I'm going to have to be backtracking and re-rolling, sort of like I did for the first Alpha Apid. Yeah. Um, well, there's still two more checks here. Yeah, yeah, there's two more, but they feel they don't feel as on the way. <laughs> but yeah, you do have to go a little bit out of your way to do it. But not. Oh, there's one. Yep, got one, and it only gave us 35 percent though. Ooh, that's but we got fun. two. Okay. So we're at 70 percent. So we'll have to do a tiny bit of backtracking, but that's fine. Yeah. Um, okay, my outskirts is a pretty straightforward level with a lot more um, skips. I am stopping to get that pyotite though, because like I said, I'm about to need 800. Um, so having some in ahead of time is just going to make this next segment uh, a little bit nicer. I'm mm -hmm. um, yeah. going to be doing one of my big boost jumps to fly directly across here um, around an encounter and the shortest route to where I'm going. Whoa! Yeah, you go the old way still, don't you? I do, because I was never informed of this new route. Yup. <laughs> waiting on a cooldown here. I probably should have just went, but oh well. Um, I like yeah. the boost jumps, okay? They're fun. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I'm going to be climbing up the side of this here thing that I'm supposed to be going through, doing a little boost jump, um, saying hello to the collectible that I'm not going to be grabbing. Um, it just happens to be there. Um, yes. hello, and collector. then taking this weird route through the top of this log, because, again, it goes around in a long fight. It does. And then we go to this. And we encountered this new uh, group of uh, adventurers. Um, that I have forgotten what purpose they serve to the story because I for I've forgotten the story to be honest. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go um, ahead and be buying those. Are you gonna you buy them now? I usually buy them after. Not the normally, but I just had it. it just felt right, you know. Uh, fair. You, you do what speaks to you. <laughs> um, and alpha tracks? Question mark. Hopefully. No. Nope. Okay, and then we're just gonna re re roll. And see if uh, see how long the game wants to cooperate with us. With yep, there's one. This oh, one is very yeah, hard to see. Um, it is. Isn't now it? I have the aphid tracks, but I'm actually not going to be doing the aphid right away. <laughs> I am going to be flying this way because for the story right now, we're supposed to be like figuring out where all these other like mech flyers. Yeah. Other other cores are gathering, um, and for whatever reason, this hermit spills the beans, and there's this very, 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 very long cutscene that I'm going to be tempting to death abuse and skip. I I don't bother with the death abuse. I know that it's faster if you can get it to happen, but I just can never get it to happen. So far, no bueno. There's certain enemies here that I want to spawn that can just kill me a lot faster than others. I mean, um, this I'm still going to be, be good, trying right? to. Yeah, I'm still going to be attempting the 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 uh, the death abuse here. If they will attack me, that would be great. Okay, they killed. They're hurting each other here. Maybe I oh. should just do this. No, you're 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 close. You're really close. I know. I've, they just flipped over, so I was trying to take advantage of that time. Okay. Right. Um, I realized that I have less health than I normally do. I think I forgot to buy something earlier, but it's not a huge deal. I mean, do we? Oh yeah, you forgot to buy Hull Durability Level 1. I did. I mean, I that's guess it doesn't matter. I, that's, it doesn't that's, really matter. It's a safety kind of upgrade that I missed, so... Yeah. We don't want safe, we want fast. So, I'm going to be buying the final required thing, which is Decoy. And then I'm just going to be dumping all my minerals into whatever I can afford, which is not much right now. Because now the only thing I need to get is 800 Pyotite. Yeah. And the reason we need this is because the uh, we're trying to get into an auction where this legendary mech is allegedly on auction. And yeah. they have like an entry fee or something. I don't know. Um, 
Ultimately, it doesn't end up mattering, but we still have to get the Pyotite. No, um, no, no, don't spoil that part. I'm going to complain oh no, about it the spoilers. moment we get there. Oh, no. I'm, I'm going to complain about it the moment we get there. <laughs> um, but yeah, but this, this... is the most dangerous of all of them. It's got the worst, most dangerous enemies. Um, it's it's really just that. Um, yeah, that's it. But that's there's some it. good news. There is something cool that I'm going to be doing. Also, this is a lot. Um, so far, the RNG has been quite good. Because in addition mm. to, you know, figuring out where you fly around on the aphid to get the minerals, uh, sometimes the aphids just won't have any. Like, they, or they won't have much. Um, some mm -hmm. of them are just all uh, dried up, I guess. Unfortunately, with Pyotai, it just mines incredibly slowly. And so it's difficult to get them um, quickly every now and again, especially when there's a lot of enemies around you. Um, Which there always are on this there one. There always are on this one. You're right. Um, but a this funky little damage boost. Yeah. This what particular the heck? aphid. <laughs> this particular aphid got, we like, literally <laughs> got like what? I just got like hit around like a freaking tennis ball by these dudes. <laughs> oh my god, that was uh, horrible. It's fine. Yeah. This is fine. This is oh, fine. Oh, but the enemies disappeared. It's 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 it's, it's okay. Huh? <laughs> um, but thankfully. Thankfully, the they, they have a lot of Pytite here on this head. And we want around, I usually try to get at least 400 before the thing that we're about to do it, Yeah, it happens. same. I'm not uh, having very good luck, though. I've, I've been taking a lot of damage and getting bullied a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and do the thing. All right. Yeah, do the thing. Um, this is the thing that I found. It is essentially... Chat, I need gonna, your energy for this one. Yes, please. We want around 400 more Pytite. Let's go. Um, and... So this is a particular bug that I found. Um, originally, you would just have to like do the alpha again by getting tracks and then you know actually finding uh, the alpha. And but instead of doing that, whenever you reload the game, um, just like exiting the main menu and selecting it again from the file, um, you actually keep all of the minerals that you collected before you did that. And since the game will just immediately put you back into the alpha and it will not let you leave the alpha, even if you reload the file until you beat it. Um, you can just reload, and then you keep all the pie type you had on the first encounter with the alpha. And so you can just keep doing that until you get to 800, and so you don't have to backtrack, you don't have to get more tracks or anything like that. You can just keep reloading your file until you get to 800. Usually we want to do it in two, that is the most optimal, but sometimes we have to do it in three. Yep. I, th I have a feeling this is gonna be a three for. <laughs> you, th you think so? I, I got the vibes are off. <laughs> <laughs> These enemies do not want to cooperate with you today, do they? Not at all. Um, there's also some tech that we haven't talked about, but mostly because I haven't gotten one yet, which we've been tentatively calling a scoop that you can do on these alpha aphids. And it has to do with the uh, wind burst. You want to explain that? Yeah, so occasionally you're going to see like a warning sign appear above the above the player's head. That is usually meaning that like a wind burst is about to go onto this particular wing or particular part of the alpha. And whenever it's that be happens, so close. you have to like you have to like um, grab onto the wing. Um, otherwise, you're going to be um, just blown off. Um, but occasionally, occasionally, we don't know how to do it because we just get it inconsistently. Um, I think it, I think if you take damage while also getting blown off, you just scoop up all the minerals at once. Um, and in, in, a, in, 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 in a particular section, oh, will you get it? I just barely got it into. Oh, good. Let's That's amazing. go. That Let's was very go. scary. Yay. That was very scary. Hey, you took Yay. the risky shots and yes. they paid off. Um, and so right now we're just going to be um, giving all 800 pyotite and for some godforsaken reason we can only do it in increments of 10 um, but in just spamming that a button and after that we're just going to oh, not buy anything and just go straight to the auction yeah. nah i got what i need don't you worry yeah exactly <laughs> Um, usually uh, I, I for... went ahead and bought all the stuff I could buy earlier. That's why I didn't bother. Uh, I might okay. have been able to get like one more thing, but I don't think it was worth the time. Probably not. Um, usually, we usually in the round where, especially for beginners, we're just like, um, you have a bunch of. You're not going to be needing any more minerals after this point. Just buy whatever you can and move on. Um, and in this next section, the auction, um, we have rain. Uh, rain droplets will just uh, appear randomly throughout the the map, and you just don't you don't want to bump into them because if so you will just drop to the floor like a rock yep um, just like a bug rain is 
big and scary and is danger. If you've ever it seen, is. um, is it Ants where they have the scene with the rain? It feels I think like so. that. It's so scary. You can see, pro um, they, they sort of like let you know where the rain is about to hit, um, with the little red circles that you're seeing pop around. <gasps> uh, but sometimes they <laughs> sneak up on you and having to dodge them is, uh, is pretty scary. Um, and the reason why it's so bad if you fall there um, is because um, the way that sort of respawning works whenever you get knocked out of bounds, it essentially puts you back at the last bit of like safe ground that you touched. And because right there I'm doing a really long glide across that, um, if you have to go back to where I started the glide from, it's a very big time loss. It is, and this is the part of the run where Osmore complains about the plot. Um, we just <laughs> collected 800 Pyotite, um, all to just not be allowed into the auction, and then we go in and steal the mech anyway. Um, oh. All of that was for nothing. Haha. <laughs> um, so. Um, I wonder why they are banned from the auction. I wonder. If Could they you believe just, it? If they are just the, <laughs> they just decided to break in anyway. Uh, but mm -hmm. you might recognize this mech. We saw it a little while ago. A while ago. Oh, wait, you tell me that this mystery mech that we haven't seen and the game purposefully oh, just no. didn't give us information about. Um, oh, no. Oh, wait, oh, no. I was going to make oh, no. a joke there, but is... is... Uh, I almost saved it, but I messed up there. Oh, I, that's I'm gonna have tragic. To redo it. That's truly that's tragic. That's extremely tragic. That sort of just happens. I feel like you could have... I feel like you could have gone to the... I could have saved it. I, no, I feel like you could have just abandoned Krissa. It would have been and, close, yeah. Yeah. Um, wah, in this wah. particular in this particular section, um, this um, mech that the game purposefully keeps uh, ambiguous and secretive from us is secretly our father's mech. Could you believe it? I couldn't. Um, and in this particular section, you actually want to keep yourself tethered to Krissa. And as soon as you e exit um, the level, you will uh, just like that. You'll be able to move on to the Phantom. However, it actually doesn't matter if you are tethered to Krissa. Um, there, there's this 10 second timer that starts whenever you get untethered to Krissa, whether you get hit by an enemy or, or whatever have you. Um, and as long as you uh, touch the end level trigger before that timer runs out, um, you will be able to figure, you will be able to like finish the level. It doesn't matter if you're actually tethered to Krissa or not. Yep, so now we are betraying our friends and taking this mech back to our dad, who is the person who the mech was stolen from in the first place. <laughs> However, this mech was like, essentially like the life goal of the leader of the Acorn Corps was to like eventually acquire this mech in her life. And so they catch <laughs> you and they have this moment of, how could you? Also, I find it very strange how Annika has like zero way of proving that this is actually her dad's mech. <laughs> Not um, at all. <laughs> like, like, I understand that we She's know like, that it is. Trust me, guys. Like, we know that it is, but, like, Annika should have a way to, like, prove that to other people. But and it is what it is. And now we're on our way home, and it's happily ever <laughs> after, right? Um, d depends if the game feels like giving us a happy, happy right, ever I after. I am now on the final boss, the Dragon Mantis, who destroyed Krysa. And now, um, but luckily our friends came to save us in a really cute cutscene that unfortunately I skipped. Um, they save us and they bring me uh, my mech that I've been working on the whole game. Um, and but one really cute detail it, that I love about this is that after you go back to using the like legendary Chrysa mech, um, it's actually less well upgraded than her own mech that she made herself. And so, you know, she mm -hmm. doesn't need to use the legendary mech because her own skills yeah. are going to take her to save the day. This is true. Oh, but also, who drove the mech? That's a very good question that I do not have an answer for. Who drove the mech to go bring it to her? It is what it is. Um, so this I'll let you take over from here because yes. it's about to get spicy. So this first section of the Dragon Mantis is pretty much the exact same thing as the Wind Mantis. It's just that the Dragon Mantis is more aggressive and time tends to fly a lot more. Time might be coming up pretty soon. Um, yeah, so time could be coming up in 10 seconds or 10 minutes, depending on how the game feels today. Um, and depending on if this buggy boy rocks? feels like cooperating with us. Um, and so the, the rocks are... Oh, so we want to make sure that the Dragon Mantis gets down to like three-fourths to like two-thirds health. I actually don't even know what the exact percentage is, but I don't know the you exact want it to be low. It's something like 40%. Yeah, and thankfully the after... Oh, he looked like he's stuck. Um, thankfully yeah, he's after being really weird. Yeah, um, it's strange, isn't it? This is a bit it? unusual. Um, but uh, hopefully um, this the second phase goes pretty well. Oops. 
So this first phase is pretty standard, but the second phase is usually you would do it the normal, the, the same way you're doing it now, just generally harder. But we actually do have a skip um, for the second phase of the boss. And what um, you're going to be go, seeing Rody doing right now is you're uh, trying to manipulate the boss's <gasps> movement. I got it. You got it. Oh my goodness. It. Time first is coming try. up. Time is coming oh. up. I got it first try. Oh no. my god, I'm so happy. I was so, I was so watching. Time. Oh. Time. Yes. Okay, so continue to explain yes, the trick so. that I did in like a blink of an eye. <laughs> yes, so that trick, essentially, she was manipulating the boss's movement so that he will um, walk down and hit the uh, kill plane at the bottom of the level. Pretty much any enemy that you push off there will hit that kill plane so that, so that they won't come back. Um, and if the boss walks at a very specific angle and at a very specific part of the map, he will just walk off and immediately get the kill plane. And then you can just finish the game. Right then and there. Let's freaking um, I was go. thinking that I was going to have more time to explain that because usually <laughs> it doesn't get that I've bad. I've had really bad luck with it lately. Um, so I'm very happy I got the first try. Because, yeah, essentially what I'm doing there is I'm using Bubble to push the boss off of the arena, make him fly, and then trick him into doing his, like, landing animation and just landing himself off the arena. Um, very cheesed. Cheesed mm -hmm. about that. Whew. Nicely done. Uh, like, nice. Final time done. was 53 minutes, 34 seconds. Nice. That is respectable. That's I will really super take that. Um, so, yeah, that was Stonefly. It is probably, I mean, it's definitely up there in my favorite speed games. Um, it's, uh, it's really fun casually. Also, the story is adorable. Story of a hero's journey and all that good stuff. Um, it's also beautiful with a good soundtrack. Um, so, yeah, I was really excited to be able to show it off to you all today. Um, it's, uh, I think it's a very underrated game. And um, I had a blast. Aww. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing game. And thank you so much to Roadkill Revenge for inviting me on, on commentary here. Um, we're the only two people that run this game. And I would like to, I would like to repeat, this game is currently on sale five dollars you I'm should go buy it and speed run it with us please <laughs> yes well i did i did buy it i don't know the speed running might be a different story but i did buy it <laughs> Good. yeah and and we do a lot of talking about numbers and math it's really not as bad as you think this the spreadsheet makes it a lot easier um and uh there's are a lot of rng but a lot of it is like sort of it's like call them rng like it's fixable rng you know yeah, not exactly. a whole lot of run ending stuff exactly I mean, the only math that you need to know right now is that this game is currently five dollars on Steam, <laughs> um, yeah. and so I highly recommend that you go out and buy it. Um, but this was this was this was a good um, this was a good good run. This is the first time that Stonefly has been on like Hotfix or anything GDQ related, and the first time that Roadkill has been on anything GDQ related. Yay! So amazing, amazing work. I didn't die. Yay. Well, <laughs> honestly, great job, you two. It was very, very fun to watch, as well as the commentary between you two. It's just amazing. Um, I was very, very impressed, and uh, I have to say that was really fun to watch. And uh, yeah, I definitely got the game because of that reason. Um, but is there <laughs> anything that you would like to say? Any shout outs or any plugins uh, before we head out for the night? Absolutely. I would like to thank you, Kiri, for having me on the show. Um, I was stoked. I already said that, but I just want to say it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and Oz for doing commentary as always and being my, my frenemy of this game. I'm so ready um, in February to uh, take back my uh, my dignity with uh, and win the race <laughs> that's coming up. <laughs> you, um, will, also, you will definitely win it. 100%. <laughs> we shall see. Um, you said that last time, too. Um, oh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I really want to shout out the Frame Fatals and Lady Arcaders communities, which have both been incredibly supportive to me as I get more into speedrunning. As Katie mentioned early on, I'm a pretty new speedrunner, and it's just been an amazing experience. And just the community in chat and everywhere has just been wonderful. And so I just want to make sure I shout that out before I go. Aww. Amazing. Aww. Okay, well, now it's your turn, Osborne. Um, <laughs> the only Felix. thing, I mean, uh, for me... Um, I stream on Twitch um, every once in a thousand years, so you could follow me on there um, if you want to see me do that. Usually, if you see me get notifications, it's because I'm like um, 
going to be running a game at like a marathon or something. Um, but I'm starting to be a lot more active on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter, Osborne. I'm Osborne on like all platforms. So whatever, um, whatever uh, platform you use, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, um, you can just follow me on there, Osborne. And I would also just like to give a huge shout out to Roadkill and the rest of the Lady Arcaders community as well, because they have been really, really kind uh, to this game and kind to us. And I uh, know, and the uh, I absolutely love the the people in that community as well. Um, so no. that's uh that's pretty much it uh, for for me and the things that I would uh, like to plug. Oh. Well, definitely looking forward to you um, coming back in February and having a race on Stonefly. That would be very fun to watch. Uh, that will yes. be on February, to give the exact date, that will be on February 24th. And so definitely a game to watch um, again, and especially as a race. So it would be a lot of fun. And um, it will be these two again, but this time Osborne's going to be the runner as well. So it's going to be a lot of fun there. And um, yeah, I definitely say this was a beautiful game. Thank you for running and showcasing. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you, GDQ, everyone, GDQ fam, GDQities in the chat. You're all cutiful and I appreciate every single one of you. And I hope you have a wonderful Friday. We are gonna be ending the show here. Uh, just a few things before we go. Uh, we do have the submissions for Unapologetically Black and Fast submissions are open now from until the January 3rd. So if you are interested in submitting to that, you can use the command UBAF in chat and you can find out further details there. Also, if you are interested in watching the hotfix one off tomorrow the new year's eve 2022 games retrospective that will be starting at 10 o'clock a.m pst and that'll be three hours ahead est my brain's just not mathing right now <laughs> so yeah stay tuned for that definitely check it out tomorrow a lot of great games um but yeah i thank you all and i hope you have a wonderful night and we'll be on two weeks from now you'll have a good one See you soon. Bye.